Let's do that. Yes. Listen. Boys and girls, this oh, yeah. is Archie. How are you doing? <laughs> Sorry for the headphones, but it was the best way to sort it out. That's cool, mate. That's cool. Right, let's put this on for Archie. Which one should we do? We should put that one on. So this is Archie. Oh, no. Hiya. Thank you very much, Priscilla, for sorting that out. <laughs> <laughs> my, my IT girl. So we all met at uh, Manchester Runfest. Right, guys, let me know. Uh, I, I can hear it perfectly fine, but if I can bump or, uh, Archie up or quieten him down on the audio. So just let me know uh, and I can sort all that out for you. Uh, where's my mouse gone? There it is. So, Archie. Hiya. Tell us about, introduce yourself and tell us about Streamer Tale. Where did it come from? How long have you been going? We'll, we'll dive into questions and we'll have a conversation after that. No doubt this lot are going to start grilling you as well. So we should just yep. dive in and have a bit I'm of ready. I'm ready for it. Um, yes, yeah, so Streamer Tale is my baby. It's a one-man operation um, born out of a love of uh, basically Jamaican culture was what initially inspired the trip to Jamaica and the sort of search uh, to find sort of delicious rum and inspiration. And um, yeah, so I've always been into great flavours, good food. I used to be a chef in I was, London. I was just going to say that. I, I remember you telling me that down at Manchester. So, so you've come yep. from that. So what, so what sort of chef were you like proper? Um... I was a chef in an Indian restaurant, actually. Uh, wow. Yes. Oh, that's too bright. Um, yeah, and I yeah I lo I loved uh, learning about new flavors, good food. I like quality and uh, cooking and creating things. But the chef life uh, probably wasn't the life for me. So I sort of thought, what what can I do with my life now? I I I sort of scratched my head and thought, what am I passionate about? And from a young age, I've been very into sort of Caribbean culture, which got me into the music and the rum. And I thought I've been wanting to go to Jamaica since I was 14. I want to get into the rum world, but I don't know much about rum. Let's quit my job as a chef, buy a ticket to Jamaica and travel the islands, learn what I can about rum, uh, try and get some work where I can. So that's what I did. I ended up sort of visiting all the distilleries. I worked in a little independent uh, blending and bottling factory in Kingston, where I just sort of, yeah, it was it uh, just sort of got inspired and fell in love with the Jamaican style of rum um, and came back and was like, great, I've got, I'm inspired. I want to, I want to show the people back here uh, how great rum can be or Jamaican rum. I mean, uh, yes, Jamaican rum is well known for being pretty good. Um, all the people that like rum know that Jamaican rum's pretty, uh, has, has a lot of characters, a lot of flavor, but I wanted to show people about more about white rum because my experience of white rum was Bacardi and Havana Club and Ray and Nephew and out in Jamaica I tried <laughs> one extreme all... the other there isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um yeah so I thought I've I've been drinking some delicious white rum out here I don't know much about it but I want to get um uh I want to get in, uh, more people into it so sort of came back and decided to set up Streamer Tale uh which yeah, sorry. No, no, no. It's just going to. So, how being a chef, especially kind of like an Indian restaurant chef, how mm -hmm. like how does that develop your palate for sort of like any spirits in general, but kind of like blending and and stuff? Because I know you were sort of pretty heavily involved yeah. in the blending of this. So, uh, yeah, is, is that is that a good way to start? Is that a completely different skill set or what? I think I think an interesting flavor is is a good start. And I think if you're the type of person that um, cares about what how something tastes or like gets excited by trying something new or creating something a little bit different, but uh, you know, I think that's a good place to start. And I, my eyes were opened working in an Indian restaurant and obviously the palate of an Indian kitchen or an Indian chef is, is so diverse. And I got open, my eyes were open so many different flavors. Um, and that sort of, yeah, I think, that definitely influenced how I approached this. And, and it was more about sort of quality and trying to pack as much flavor, but also be approachable as well. Um, so, so that's. So, so what sort of time scale are we talking here from you sort of quitting chef life to going over to Jamaica? Are we talking like okay. five years ago? Yes. So 2017 left the kitchen. Uh, oh, yeah. So when, and then, yeah, that's when I went to Jamaica. Yeah. Summer 2017. Um, and then spent quite a few months out there, uh, yeah, and then came back, and that's uh, when I decided to do this. 
So she weren't out there long then. It was just a few months. Uh, yeah, yeah. So two or three months. Was it? Could you? Was it the fact you sort of had this idea and then you couldn't wait to get back to the UK, or, or you just kind it, of a few? Was a few it a holiday, different. or was it? Were you going it for was, long? It was a working holiday, um, but a few different factors. M money uh, was one of them, and uh, yeah, I was still uh, yeah, I still had bills to pay. I could if I could have I would have stayed there for longer if I could have. I probably never would have come back. You'd still be you'll find me down in the independent bottling factory, wow. blending away with Mr. Lion. So, <laughs> so, what, so what was it? Was it just the whole atmosphere in the life, or uh, like what? What you know? I'd yeah, to, I'd love to go to Jamaica. I'd love to, but I've never definitely been. go. It's a country with a lot of character. Uh, the music, the people, the food, uh, the the countryside, the beaches. There's a lot going on, uh, and it's it's uh, and there's a sort of sense of kind of yeah, just openness and freedom and fun and like it. They have a a good. Well, I don't. I felt that people were just always up for a good time, and like every took took each day as it came. And yeah, it, it's uh, it's a difficult place to leave. <laughs> is it is it all Ray and nephew out there, or Ray, or is there is there other uh, stuff? It's the dominant. It's the dominant drink. Yeah, uh, and there's obviously Appletons. They're the sort of main. The sort of commercial brands that you see a lot around. But obviously, you've got Hamden's and Worthy Park, which are the the oh. really. I was just going to sort of say, so when, when you go to like the bars or the beach bars or, or the hotels and stuff like that, like what, what are the brands that they're pouring? You know, Ren, what, what are Ren, it few. is right. <laughs> yeah. Like, as, in, as in the overproof. As in yeah. The... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they, and, and with, and with everything, milk, Guinness, water, uh, boom, uh, which is a flat Red Bull, uh, <laughs> which uh, wow. keeps, you going, keeps you going for days. <laughs> so, so they they don't have like much to do with like the underproof stuff. I know, I know they obviously will be floating around a little bit, but you know it's all the overproof, the sixty three. Uh, yeah, they call it red rum out there, so that's like it's normally like Appleton's, um, but yeah, not not it's it's mainly rare nephew that's drunk around the island. So so your rum experience then, did that kind of come from? Jamaica, or were you kind of into rum a little bit before that? I was I was massively into rum from probably. Uh, earlier than I should have been. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got introduced to Ray and Nephew by one of my sister's uh, uh, past uh, ex-boyfriends. Um, and when I went to university, I worked uh, twice a month in the West Indian Community Centre in Leeds, uh, working with some uh, Caribbeans, pull, uh, pulling on reggae nights. And that sort of whole putting on those nights goes hand in hand with drinking Ray and Nephew and I got quite into Ray and Nephew when I was at uni. Uh, so, hang more... on, I, I, I was going to ask you what your first rum was. Mm. Uh, was it Ray or was, was, it, it, was it Captain it, Morgan's? It wasn't Ray. It was most definitely Morgan Spiced, uh, sadly. <laughs> Uh, but the That's... old bottle, do you remember the old bottle which had this like blue lid and the sort of yeah, different yeah. label? Yeah, so that was what was that. Was, I haven't seen that bottle around for a long time. I think they just sort of rebranded it. But yeah, the Morgan Spiced. Um, I, I tell you what, that. that's. Yeah. That's not a bad journey to go from Morgan Spice to Ray Nephew that quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Quick, quick learn. So, so you came back from Jamaica. Yeah. Uh, and you can't, did, did you come back with from Jamaica with the idea for this or did this yeah. come once you yeah did? it came back with the idea but the original plan was to apply for jobs with some other brands or at drinks companies uh, get a bit of industry experience because so far all my experience had been a, a trip to Jamaica came back with the plan I applied for a few jobs at other brands other companies uh, didn't get any of them so I said screw you I'll start my own brand I'll show you um, and that's what I did I contacted a few of the distilleries I met out there said I want to develop a blend with you I love what you're producing I want to develop a blend so I contacted Hamden's and Worthy Park uh, and they put me in touch with um uh yeah they they sort of uh, help held my hand showed me what to do and so I put together the blend with them and a couple of other uh, other distilleries and yeah wow. so from that idea from that idea for committing to producing it to launching was about a year and a half of sort of product development branding um fundraising well fundraising yeah and licenses that was a bit of a nightmare um but yeah single-handedly put it all together so, in about 18 months 
Wow. So this is not something from Ian A. Shear or anything like that. You've done all the sort of groundwork, the legwork for this. And it, I did go through Ian A. Shear in the end. You did, yeah. It is them, but it's... I, work, I, I, work, I, work, I worked with them. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the reps from Hamden's and Worthy Park put me in touch with, right. with them. Cool. And I, and I went to them with, with what I wanted to produce. And we went through quite a lot of... Um, uh, tasting, yeah, obviously tasting process and and narrowing it down to the blend that I wanted to do. Cool, cool, cool. So, can, do you want to get? I mean, it's totally cool if you don't, but do you want to get into the kind of rums that are in here, or is, do you want to keep that? Uh, if you want to keep it secret, that's that's fine. I don't. No, I mean, it, pe people are into rum and they want to know what's in it. I'm not. Uh, I'm not sort of secretive about it. Uh, I think it's good to know. Um, go, go for it, Ed. Because I've yeah, so it's it's uh, it's three Jamaican pots still. So Hamden's Worthy Park and Money Musk. All unaged pot stills, uh, blended with uh, an Angostura, three-year aged Angostura, aged and filtered, and that was sort of we added that in to just sort of mellow out that Jamaican uh, full onness because Jamaican rum can be quite full on, and I wanted this to be an approachable blend. So someone coming in who's probably not drunk much rum, maybe not many uh, spirits, and I wanted it to have the the, the sort of elements of super flavoursome uh, rum, but sort of slightly mellowed to make it really easy drinking, approachable, um, nothing too sort of uh, niche was was the idea behind it. Wow. But by the way, guys, all my lot that have got this, if you if you if you haven't tried it yet, crack it open and start letting us know what you think of it, because I haven't seen any comments in here yet. So you're trying to just crack on and open it, guys. If you've got enough to do, we're going to do, well, I'm going to do a couple of cocktails, a couple of mixed sort of drinks. Uh, coming up in a bit, but uh, just see how much you've got. Try it and let us know what you think. So, the, the which is the big, I I don't think I've personally had any experience of Money Musk and it, in its own right. It was, which one would be the super funky? That would be, well, Hamden's Hamden? probably. It, yeah, is. yeah, Hamden's is, is always quite full on and I, I went there a few times I, the distillery is amazing I mean if you ever go to Jamaica Hamden should be one of your first stops just the wow. the distillery is amazing the the processes it, it, it's it's like going back in time it is it is some it is special um and this is something I want to touch on you with the white rum as well because I know you're mm -hmm. kind of passionate about that I've gone down this white rum journey you, mm -hmm. how how different are these three? We ignoring Trinidad. We can kind of we can chat about Trinidad, but that, yeah. how different are these three white unaged rums from Jamaica? Bearing in mind that this this it's all a distill. What I'm trying to say, it's all in the distilling and their processes, isn't it? How it how it's so different. Yeah, so they are they are different distilleries. I think with what my experience from rum, uh, the the variety. I think the islands have more variety. So I think if you compare, you can compare Jamaica to Barbados. And then Elliot, when you get into Jamaica, you can, you can compare the different distilleries. Um, and uh, they, they are, they do have sort of different characteristics. So I think Worthy Park is much more grassy. Um, it, it touches on a, a bit, it has sort of elements of agriculture to it. And some people bring out that sort of grassiness in the, in the stream of tail. Hamden's is, is super funky. Money Musk is, is funny enough, not something I've drunk too much of by itself. Um, but, uh, it's, a, it's a sort of quite typical Jamaican pot still rum. So the Jamaicans, they have long fermentation processes. They generally have use pot stills and that just packs in so much flavor they reuse the dundar so if you which is the sort of runoff from each batch they put back into the next batch and that just keeps that flavor going so you know I, I, when you go to hamden's you see these big vats of dundar which look i mean it doesn't look very appetizing um but you 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 just think god that's that stuff's been reused about two 200 times so you've got all the the flavors coming in, in, into each batch I don't know whether you know or not. Do they use that that same dunder for all their rums, or is it just specific? Is it that? I is it that? Is that their core recipe? Good I've, question. I've, I've seen conflicting stories on this, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know that either. Actually, I don't. I don't want to say anything that yeah, could be no, wrong. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure about that. I'm just kind yeah. of fascinated because even I, I can see some of this lot now sort of piping up in the comments. And mm -hmm. 
I totally get what you mean about the tr- the Trinidad coming in at the because you uh, for, for me the first nose on that is that sort of almost agricole but very mm-hmm. sort of funky Jamaican. Yeah, but, you get that overripe banana. Definitely, definitely pineapple. I was going to say guava mm-hmm. on there. I get a little bit of guava on that. To be fair, so really, there's a lot to yeah. it. I think the nose is 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 a little bit more punchy than the palate as well. So some people, when they first whiff it, are like, "God, wow, no, I don't know if I want to try that." And then they sip it, and they're like, "Oh, God, actually, no, this is this is this is smooth. This is easy going." This is what I mean. No, this I've been so fascinated by this white rum. So I've got, mm. I've done it with you. Seen, I've got thirty five white, well, thirty six now uh, mm-hmm. white rums behind here, and I've been doing like a daiquiri test with them all. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, like the last video I've done is like a blind tasting of. X amount. I'm not going to give the game away, but it just fascinates. I love drinking white rums neat. I absolutely mm-hmm. love it, but it just fascinates mm-hmm. me how they're all completely different. And yet yeah. you said it at the start, like Bacardi and Havana, that's most people's kind of... Yeah. And then you I kind mean, of write off white rums. Yeah. And and I think it's it's almost... Uh, it's, 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 it shouldn't be... You can't put sort of agricole, uh, agricole into the same category as, as, as let's say, Streamertail. They're both delicious drinks, but they're completely different. I mean, agricole is is, is cachaça. Um, well, it's the same as cachaça. It's distilled cane juice. This is distilled molasses, and it, it, it's a completely different product. They, I love them both, but it, it, it's sort of, it, to put them into the same category is 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 detrimental to, to them because it, they just, they get boxed in. And one thing I've experienced at events is people don't stop at my stand because they don't drink white rum, and uh, and uh, I and then they go uh, 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 yeah they walk straight past. I don't drink white rum because they've tried a couple, and I've tried Bacardi. Have... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Wow. Uh, but you know, uh, people who do come over are always really pleasantly surprised, and that's why I go to these events because it, it, to to get people to try something new, and I always appreciate it. Was sort of Manchester because obviously that was the first time I met you and, and heard of Streamtail. Mm-hmm. Was Manchester Rum Fest was that kind of a big one for you? Was that the first one since COVID? When did you actually launch? Yeah, There's, sorry, loads launched, of questions there. Yeah, no, that's fine. I launched in two thousand nineteen. <laughs> um, oh wow! So I had a good year of of picking up momentum before uh, COVID kicked in, and then wow. it, it, things slowed right down for a few years it's quite it was i had big plans for 2020 lots of tastings cocktail master classes a few other promotional events all booked in they all got cancelled so i was like okay well i better go back to work for a few years um till this blows over and then yeah manchester i was supposed to do obviously april 2020 and then uh, i couldn't do the rearranged date uh and then yes yeah, so manchester was one of the first, yeah, the first rum event I'd done since since COVID, and it, yeah, it was good to be back. It was good to get the product in front of people. I mean, I know it's busy, but every time I looked over at your stand, it was it was kind of you were always busy. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good. It's good to see. Yeah, um, um, it was a good event. Uh, I'll definitely be back, uh, and good vibe up in Manchester. Yeah, it's called. Cool. Where are you from? I can't pick the accent. Where Where are you? <laughs> I, I was born in Hereford, West Midlands. Were you? Okay. Yeah. But I don't so is that where West. you are? Are you kind of uh, that way? No, you... I'm, I'm in Lewisham now, South London. Right, okay. Right, yeah, okay. So after, are you, are you doing London. like Rumfest, like Ian's Rumfest? Are we doing anything like that? Uh, I, I will be there uh, for fun. I don't quite have the budget for, for with the with the a, bottle in your rucksack uh, <laughs> between you and me we know Steve, how it maybe, goes maybe <laughs> <laughs> hopefully he's not watching <laughs> are we he and my blood it's it's fine but no I'm but just, i do go so how oh there's, there's so many questions about because we have lots of different people on here and i think mm-hmm. you're possibly if i'm right the first Oh no, there still will be a couple from um, Craft Rum Club. But I was going to say the first sort of ENA Shear um, open oh, yeah. kind okay. of blend we've kind of chatted about, and we do sure. talk about it in, in the uh, in the membership community. It's just it just mm-hmm. fascinates me because I've listened to Carsten quite a few times mm-hmm. now chatting about the process, and you know mm-hmm. I can I've I've seen photos of what ENA Shear looks like, let alone yeah. you know all those. So for people that don't know, ENA Share is essentially the largest blending house in the world. They just buy up. I mean, I think they own two thirds of the Coroni stocks 
uh, still in the world. I think I think that's right. But they yeah. ju- they just blend for people like Archie essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, well, most uh, probably eighty percent of rum bad brands that don't have their own distillery will have probably been blended at, by yeah. Sheer. I mean, I don't think it, there, there may be one other company or two other companies that do it, but yeah. not, no one on their scale. Um, yeah, they're quite an operation. Yeah, um, I'd love to. He invited me over there. I'd love to go over and see it, but I'm just like, yeah, do. Well, <laughs> there we go. And another one to add to the bucket list. I've been to their offices in 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 Amsterdam, and and I would definitely like to work there. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite a cool place. Um, so, have... so how many how many blends roughly did you go through to get to get that? See, I'm fascinated by this. It's like, did they put a blend together and you try it, or was it just lots of different rums and then you kind of what I was, was like? I was quite specific about what I wanted. Um, yeah. And actually, funnily enough, this uh, 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 the first blend I created was my original idea, which is, a, is an overproof blend. And I have that blend waiting and ready to launch. But okay. I, I, I launched this one first because it was so the other uh, the other blend is a bit more stro- a bit more punchy, a bit stronger. Uh, I decided to go with uh, it with this one because it was a bit more approachable, and uh, and we created this one to be bottled at forty, which was a bit more versatile. Um, but yes, yeah, so back to your question, yeah, this, this I probably yeah about twenty four samples, I reckon this that wow. it took to get to this blend. But I, and I went with quite yeah, go over, on. Sorry. over about uh, two months, maybe. Um, but I, okay. I went with quite a, quite a quite a strict brief. Like I wanted it to be a certain percentage. I wanted to use certain distilleries. I wanted it to have a certain flavor profile. Um, and I suppose that's what maybe lots of people do. But I I, I don't know where, how how sort of what? clear other people's ideas are before they you, go into. You uh, say that I I've heard Cast and Talk. As I say, I've heard Cast and Talk a couple of times. And it, it, the amount of he says the amount of times people come up and just say we want a rum, and mm. they've got no clue of mm. what they actually want i think sure. what, from what you've said is probably quite refreshing today obviously you're going to have the experts you know that, like the bigger brands knowing exactly what they want from but from someone from your size and your point of view i would imagine that's quite unique to him yeah i maybe had a clear idea but i uh, yeah i didn't have the finance or the licenses so i suppose what what one problem off their back was another problem um it took me a while to sort out all that all that stuff um but yeah i i don't know i'm quite specific and quite kind of uh, i have yeah i'm just gonna die because i can see the comments flying i'm just gonna scroll back through the client uh the, sure. the comments i think uh i'll come well if, if you want to see there's a couple of questions in there i can already see so uh yeah. Geraint is asking uh hang on let's let's put that so do you know so we can chat about that do you know the percentages of what you've got so Geraint wants to know how much tdl was in in there um if you don't know specifics i don't know or specifics. don't want to share that's 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 cool i i don't know the the, the t uh tdl uh oh uh i don't uh, know all right no, don't. um i don't know sorry <laughs> no, that's cool that's cool uh where did they start tasting uh da, 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 i've lost it where are we? some more jamaican to me right no i've lost <laughs> where they started where are they morgan's here we go right there, there's one Here's the first ones coming through. Uh, it's definitely mellow, amazing nose, but you're right, mellow taste, subtle with good, sub good complexity, surprisingly soft. I want to dack this. This I'm going to crack a dack out with this in a bit. Definitely do. It it is the aftertaste. The aftertaste it goes from. It goes from that sort of typical Jamaican fruitiness. I get. I almost sort of get, like vanilla-y, buttery, mm. cream, cream till the end mm. of it. You know. It's, yeah. It's, it's like, and I love r- rums like this. I love the journey rums. The mm-hmm. like blended rums, obviously, but I call them journey rums because the first palate, the first taste is completely different to how it mm-hmm. finishes. And mm-hmm. I love stuff like that. So and it you... changes. Some days I drink it and I'm like, wow, it didn't taste like that last week. And I don't know if it's something I've eaten that day or, or whatever, but it, yeah. Do you, do you think it's, because I've noticed this quite a bit with oh, a lot of rums now. The longer you leave them out in a the glass, for instance, or the longer the mm-hmm. more's come out of the bottle, it, it completely yeah, changes. Yeah, definitely opens opens them up. Yeah, and I think if a if a rum's been in a bottle for a long time, you should definitely let it kind of breathe for a little bit before breathe. you drink it. Um, 
yeah i think the same with wine if 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 you if you're if you're a liquid and you've been shoved in a bottle for a few years with a cork on like you you need to you need you need to let it breathe a bit yeah here's uh, here's tom uh tom says oh wow this ta the taste is crazy it's so different to what i was expecting from the nose uh Steve over in uh, Northern Ireland. I agree. Nice funk in the nose. Delicate palate. Soft drinks really well with me. I, I've, I mean, from tasting, this is definitely not a rum and coke rum for me, but it is 100% a daiquiri mm -hmm. rum. I'm really interested. To, I've got the tonic ready and waiting to go. I'm really interested mm -hmm. to try this with a tonic in a second. I may, I may have just had one. <laughs> it, it's good. <laughs> is, that, is that your go-to drink? Like, what's your go-to drink they're, for this? They're a daiquiri, daiquiri usually. Um, if I've got every, if I've made the sugar syrup, yeah. but yeah, tonics. I, I, you know, I, I luckily got given quite a few uh, uh, cans of tonic, and it's just so easy. Um, yeah, it, and satisfying, wow. fresh, and it's uh, yeah, something different to a gin and tonic. Try a bit of funk, get coconut and dates, raisins. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That might be the uh, the sort of TDL on it, the Angostura actually coming out mm -hmm. at the end. Uh, How yeah. many uh, tots did you send out? I think many... there's 28, oh, yeah. nice. and a surprise and a surprise one as well oh, yeah. uh, for some okay. for someone who's not on tonight, who's on holiday. Uh, but I thought I would give them as well. So yeah, so with this it should be uh, 28 of them. Uh, I'm just waiting for right here. Here we go. So this is. Hang on, I'm gonna read this with an interesting way to tone down a funk. Elegant. So Geraint is our resident agricole uh, okay. lover. He's nice. complete. Yeah, he's completing that at a cane juice man. Yeah, good. So I'm getting into it. Nice. Yeah, yeah Some... I, I tell you what, he's taken me on a bit of a journey because I was, you know, I'd written off sort of cane juice or agricole rums, if you like. Mm -hmm. But he's he's sort of taught me the error of my ways. It's some yeah, really good stuff. Out there's there. a lot. There's a lot to be discovered there. Yeah. Uh, what's Darren saying, Darren? Great knee, easy drinking, kind of vanilla citrus. Anyone else getting citrusy? Fruity finish. Prefer it to Plantation Jamaica. That's good. Interesting. As in this, <laughs> who's that, Tom? As in the Zymaca, Tom? Nice. I wouldn't have, that would have been my first thought to compare them, to be honest. But uh, Which one? The one with the sort of blue on the label? Yeah, I'm, gu I'm guessing that's what he means. The Zymaca. I, I don't know whether he means the, um, oh, right. the, the H couple. ones. I, I yeah. don't know what Tom's... Tom, Tom's no doubt put that somewhere. Uh, Karen or Caron is one I'm looking out for. She she's sort of just starting on her rum journey. Here we go. Oh, right. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, hide. Took two sips, but so strong I can't handle sips. So put the rest of the mojito. <laughs> Bless her. That, she's coming do. over. From, she's coming over from spiced rum. So she's uh, fair enough. She's on this journey. Right? It makes so, a banging uh, mojito. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this smells funky, but it's beautiful, sweet and fruity. A bit funky, totally love it. Right, Money Musk. Here's Decky. Yeah. Decky's got the Money mu Money Musk. Always find a little musky on the finish, but not in a horrid way. I can't think of of this. I've ever had a Money Musk run. No, they're quite hard. They're not sort of around too much. I haven't. Yeah, I don't see them around that often. They do. I think <laughs> there is an overproof one, and there's a couple of of aged ones. Um, but yeah, they're not that they're not that seat uh, popular. Well, not uh, they're popular, but I don't see them around. So you've mm. got. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna crack a highball out glass. So you've got this. You've got an overproof. Mm -hmm. I can I can imagine after the last two years, there's a hell of a lot of work to do for mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. to get this out there. Let alone sort of thinking about a new product extension but at the same token you need that sort of second and third product to get the brand yeah. really flying it's kind of that yeah swings around about thing isn't it yeah it's more it will more happen when i need when i yeah when i can afford it when i've got when i can uh when i've got need to restock this batch i'll look into getting to, to producing two but yeah I'm, i really want to get the overproof out as soon as possible because I, I saw someone comment the overproof sounds uh was it Chris uh, Bongo Bingo Bong? Uh, yeah, call, call him call him Bingo Bingo Ringo <laughs> Bingo Ringo. <laughs> yeah, it, the overproof is banging. It's fifty seven percent Hamden's and Worthy Park blend, and that was my original baby. Uh, and I can't wait to launch it. And it may be it may be in a year, it may be in three years. But watch this space. I'm not giving up. So it will it will come out at some point. 
And why, I'll definitely um, let you know. <laughs> why? So this is an interesting one because if, if you've had a little bit of experience of this, why um, 57%? So like Ray Nephew, like 63 and all that, which I, I find is a little bit bizarre as well when you look at all mm-hmm. the other ABVs around and out there. Yeah. Like 57 is a normal one. But why Why sort of 57 when sort of so, a Jamaican would be 63-ish? Um, I Because I knew that overproof was anything over 50 Seven point five, I think it's yeah. Overproof is anything over fifty-seven. I, I'm, I think. And yeah, back in back in back in the old oh. days. So so in this day and age, it's like fifty-four. Well, any, okay. anything over fifty point one is technically mm-hmm. over, overproof because then it would okay. be a hundred. It would be a hundred and point two yes. proof. So it has sure. to be over. Yeah. Back in the day, it was the maths sort of worked out to fifty-seven was was, was the hundred proof. But now. Okay. Now we've gone decibelization and all that malarkey. It's mm-hmm. literally double. So 57 is well overproof. Mm-hmm. And I, I basically wanted an overproof run, but I wanted it to be less uh, less strong than Rare Nephew. Um, but I sort of, I probably did it the wrong way around, choosing the percentage and making a blend to, to fit that percentage. I mean, a, a, a sort of experienced blender would say, no, you don't decide what percentage you're going to do it. You're going to create the blend and and you will you will water it, you will dilute it to the to the percentage that really makes the the blend sing um but you know there's other factors you have to that, think about with these things yeah um, that, that's quite interesting actually to kind of turn around and say so is that a blend of rums as well yeah it's uh it's hamden's and worthy part um I'm, I'm telling wow. everyone my secrets now <laughs> someone will get around to it before <laughs> me because i'm a bit slow at these things but um, yeah, that that was yeah full on unaged pot still, fifty seven percent Jamaican white rum. And, and yeah, it's going to be some because I one of my other. I mean, it's it's absolutely zero competition for you, but I mean, it's this is what's this fifty four point five in it? Yeah, the the lost years. Oh yeah, uh, 50, nice. I mean, there's just yeah. there's just something about them at that sort of mm-hmm. ABV, mm-hmm. really really good. Right, let's have a. I've only done a little half one stirred down so this is this is what you recommend on your website isn't it it's the mediterranean fever tree yeah mediterranean tonic. Think it's a good one it's a light one it it, it really helps you know the, the rum can shine hey, through with that one are you doing lots of marketing around because obviously the big drink the pub drink the bar drink in the uk is mm-hmm. kind of gin and tonic isn't it mm-hmm. are you doing lots of marketing around this like an alternative gin and tonic or like what what's your whole marketing angle for pubs for people at home like where are you going with this Good question, Steve. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, <laughs> However, you can get my, it out there. <laughs> my marketing angle, uh, yes, get it in front of as many people as possible, as quickly as possible, as, as cheaply as possible. Um, yeah, I, I think with my product, I feel you kind of have to try it before you, like it, it's some with white rum that sort of people have preconceptions about. Um, people aren't going to spend 30, 30 pounds on a bottle that they haven't tried really. So my approach was just to do events with people, get some on the ground feedback, get it in front of, get people tasting it. So I'm not spending money on marketing campaigns. I'm not doing much social media. I think I, w- I, I, I like to be able to tell, tell the story. I like to be able to, to describe the blend, get people tasting it because I think if you taste it, and you like it, then you'll buy it. If you don't like it, and you won't buy it, that's fine. At least you can't persuade people to uh, spend 30 quid on something they haven't tried, or you can, but um, yeah. So I think are, it, are you doing more of that then, more of like the shows and whatever you want to call it, like markets, what, um, what, I'm get, as opposed I'm to going down the it. pub, as opposed to the pub and bar route? If you, I, I do both, yeah. So I, yeah. I, 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 I hit up bars. I, I did have quite a few good contracts with some bars in London, um, uh, and yeah, really good feedback. Was doing quite good volume with them. Um, COVID obviously uh, screwed that yeah. up. So, I'm, but I'm just no, getting no. back in. I'm, I'm getting back into that now. So yeah, uh, this is this, this, this is a rum and tonic is a banging. I tell you what, you don't actually lose that Jamaican funk in there either. It's sort of, mm. it's like, it really play. I know this is a dehydrated orange as well, but the orange flavour is coming out. That, mm-hmm. that's lovely. I really it like really that. W- yeah. It's easy drinking. It's, uh, it's refreshing. Yeah. 
And you sort of, like it. In a, in a funny way, that sort of kills the bitterness of the tonic as well. They, they work mm-hmm. perfectly together. Mm-hmm. That's that's really interesting, actually, because you don't see rum and tonic. You know, brands brands try to sort of cl- promote it because obviously it's the way to get mm-hmm. gin and tonic drinkers to rum. Yeah, but very very rarely does it actually work. Yeah, I like that. Oh, good. Some good comments about that's the impressive. about the price point. Yeah, get yeah. on my website. Someone said to have a website. <laughs> yes, oh, I, I do. Te- hang on, I tell you what. While while Archie's doing that, I'll t- Archie can talk. I'll put this on screen because I've got it ready to go. Uh, yeah, boom, that's there. I'm going to crack on with the daiquiri. Um, website is streamertailrum.com www.streamertailrum.com and we do have a little discount on for anyone okay. logging in um which is barman steve for 10 percent 10 percent off and that <laughs> that like it says on the screen valid till midnight on wednesday so Boom. yeah um so go so go, go and buy direct if those of you I've, I've kind of haven't kept up with any of the comments on there at all i know there's loads and loads of comments on there but We'll have a dive through that. I just want to. I just want to make a daiquiri really, really quickly because we love, we love a daiquiri, don't we? Absolutely love daiquiris. What's you your ratio a for a daiquiri? I do 50, 50 rum, uh, twenty five lime, and twenty five one one syrup. Right. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think, I think the rum's too good to add in too much. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, look, I've had it with lots of different iterations, and they're all they all work. But yeah, I quite like I quite like mine quite tart as well. But yeah, um, I you know. so you, you've done a four four two yeah. two essentially. I'm going for a four two one. Okay, uh, so we'll do that. One one sugar. Yeah, so half. So yeah, so yeah. essentially. Um, seven. I'm doing a little one because I haven't got much left, but sort of seven mm-hmm. and a half mil for all you guys at home. Seven and a half mil of um, sugar, 15, 15 mil of lime, and then thirty mil of um, of uh, rum. So four. I've been on five two ones actually, or five five two one in a bit <laughs> for for all this. It's kind of um... thanks, Chris. I'll get that out to you this week. Oh, hang on. It's just let's let's let's, uh, let's come back. I'll tell you what, I'll shake and then I'll come back to the comments. Nice. Oh, the streamer tail bird. Um, that is oh, yeah, the... we haven't talked about that, have we? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I came to mind, but I, yeah, I was obviously chatting about something else. Um, it's, uh, it's the national bird of Jamaica. So uh, also known as the doctor bird. Um, it's also called the streamer tail. And it is the, it is the, yep, the bird on the bottle. Uh, mm-hmm. When I was out in Jamaica, uh, I was sitting on someone's veranda and feeding streamer tails from a little bird feeder. And I thought, oh, if I ever start a rum brand, I have to name it after these these birds because they're amazing. And they're, they're these beautiful emerald green hummingbirds with these amazing tails. Um, and yeah, I wanted to I wanted to try and the brand to be uh, um, like uh, symbolize sort of a bit more nature rather than the tiki vibe or the pirates vibe. I wanted to go down the more sort of natural, natural brand vibe, uh, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, there's no added, uh, nothing added into the, into the blend. So no added sugar or no added color. Um, and that sort of, I suppose was supposed to relate to the, the natural side of everything. That is delicious. Interestingly, for me on a daiquiri, I get more of that finish, more of that Trinidad, mm-hmm. that sort of buttery, creamy kind of, that almost bizarrely reminds me of like a Cuban um, mm-hmm. sort of style daiquiri, a column still daiquiri. That's really mm-hmm. bizarre. Is that your first daiquiri with it, Steve? That is, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I'd, I'd literally, also I've done, but I'm very good at doing these uh, sort of dramming mm-hmm. up of these tasters. I resist the urge to try it at all until the night. Sure. So I had a little, a little bit before we went live, but that was my That's first good. sort of since manchester mm-hmm. right. oh, nice I'll just, I'll just click that hang on oh hang on what's carl carl was up at manchester with me actually uh i had it at manchester and wow it tastes much better than i remember good uh, as i tried so many others that day yeah this is a cracking daiquiri love this i greg i reckon i can ship to the us but i'm also 
I'm actually going to the US in about three weeks. <laughs> so oh, if you're in if, if you're in if you're in New York, <laughs> I can bring you a bottle. Wow. Um yeah, annoyingly, because you, the US have different rules about bottle sizes. So if I wanted to launch out there, I'd have to have bottle a whole batch at 70 CL, not no, 75 CL, not 70 CL. They, they've binned it. Have they? Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's, it's gradually working out state oh. to state. But, um, and there's companies now, I'll, I forget who oh. one of them is. There are companies now working with people like you to get them out there. But there's certain okay. states already that take 70s. Uh, and they mm -hmm. reckon by the end of 20, where are we? By the end of 2023, it should be um, all all states okay. in the US. Good to they know. just want to open up. So the yeah, interesting yeah. angle is, I think, personally, I think uh, most of the Caribbean distillers are actually going to come down in size from 750 to 700 mm -hmm. because then they've got access to the UK markets as well. Yeah. Because at the moment, yeah. we don't get a lot of, like, Barbon Court, for instance, or the Clarins, mm -hmm. you know, sure. we don't get, because they're 750s. So, yeah. yes, there's there's a few states now taking okay. 700s. That's good to is, know. Uh, nice. But the issue, the issue is obviously glass, isn't it, at the moment? So, uh, yeah. right, let's, let, let's, uh, let's see if we can go through some of these comments. Got more. Did I already see this? Got more going on. Than, oh, yeah, I did. That's that. Right. So, I'm back to where I was. Right. It's Chris. Uh, do it, Steve. What's this? Do a live tasting from Jamaica. Oh, right, mm -hmm. okay. that's obviously something <laughs> said. Uh, OP agreed, Charlie. Uh, right, Oscar Ryan saying, uh, okay, here is my surprise. Bought a couple of mix. Well, okay, so so right. <laughs> <laughs> wow wow archie you're you're honored right this this guy here drinks a tea punch and that is it you know mixing mm -hmm. rum mixing rum no 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 he's bought okay. Seckford, Seckford, the green one this one look at this look at this if i if i'd have had that in the fridge i would have tried that mm -hmm. with you uh mm -hmm. Grant. i would have done uh, nice how would it uh, yeah good actually rather good nice i'll try it nice Definitely. that's it that's actually that's not a bad shout for that kind of uh, for that kind of rum. I'm going to do the Stratford soda test in a minute. I've left myself mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, did you play with the, Strat the, uh, the Stratfords up at Manchester? Did you have a yes. little taste of them? Yeah, I went with the citrus, the citrus one. But, yeah, um, which, wor which worked best with. I thought it worked best. It, the, yeah. the, let the streamer tail shine through. I think. Um, yeah, so I went with that one. I've still got. I've got a box of them which I'm getting through as well. <laughs> nice. Nice. I'm not going to bother with spice. I don't think there's much point. I don't see mm. that as like a ginger ale. It might be a ginger ale. It might be all right, but I don't see that as a ginger beer ale kind of rum. But definitely I, kind of. I do drink it with ginger ale. I think yeah. ginger beer does kind of mask it a little bit too much, but ginger ale is lighter, and it, it does it does work uh, with ginger ale if you if you fancy it. But yeah, I think the ginger. When I've tried it with ginger beers, it, it, it it's it's been too it's been too sort of masked by the fiery gingers. But ginger ale works. Cool, cool, cool. I think I've caught up, guys. If you have got questions that I've missed, you know the drill. Question capital letters right at the start, so we can uh, we can kind of see. Uh, hang on, sorry, I missed that one as well. Havana Steve, the lack of any alcohol burn is surprising. This is a DAC all day long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like definitely gets lost with Coke. I wouldn't even bother with Coke, to be honest. Uh, that, it's, a, it's, a, it's too much of a classy rum to go with Coke. Uh, yeah, but each to their own. <laughs> I'd rather you'd have it with Coke than the Bacardi and Coke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, did I see that? How long ago is this? 2041. What's the time now? Oh, yeah, I'm like 11 minutes behind. So I'm assuming we've, we've done that <laughs> website. I'll flash it up on screen again in a sec for you. Mum is my um is my Sussex rep. If you want to buy from there, <laughs> <laughs> uh, da, da, da. right? Grind is so neat. Uh, it's really very smooth white rum. I think Mrs G might rather like this with tonic. Uh, I tell you what, uh, Grind, that Mediterranean tonic is absolutely delicious. I love that. That is amazing. Oh, yeah, really, really big fan of that. Nice. Um, right, Tom, yes and the nose. Made a mini DAC. Delicious. What's that? <laughs> Can you persuade people to spend 30 quid? Steve does it also. Yeah, 30 quid's nothing for a UK run. Like, what, what's right. what are you whinging about? I'm just, not, I'm just not from a marketing background. I, I, <laughs> you know, 
I'm not a very good salesperson. I just I just do it for the run. <laughs> we'll get there. I'm learning. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, I think we're catching up now because I remember this. So this is Bingo Ringo. He's, so he's in Cornwall. He's my Cornish man. Oh, nice. Uh, he's ordered. Uh, that's cool. Tom has ordered as well. We like that. Uh, might nice. be Thanks, my guys. last for a while. I'm on a ban. <laughs> Artwork is lovely. Hey, Greg. Uh, question. Do you ship to the US? We've done that. Right. How fun would that be to meet you in New York? So Anne is in uh, totally the other side of the US. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's, I don't know how far that is. Probably about a thousand miles or so. I've, I've got no nice. comprehension. Probably it's longer than that. that. Probably, probably a few thousand miles. I don't mm -hmm. know. Uh, but that, that might be, uh, that might be uh, quite funny. I would, Kevin, would I like that with spiced orange ginger ale? Uh, maybe. So Kevin's my uh, big fever tree spiced orange ginger ale man. Um, yeah. yeah, try it. I, I mean, it's not... Go on. I think it works. It, it stream and tell works well with orange. I put a slice of fresh orange in my rum and tonics. Um, so I, I give it a try. Yeah, I can I can imagine it will work well. I don't know how heavy, how heavily flavoured the spiced orange tonic is. It's, it's, it's subtle. It's not um, okay. It's not like orange juice in your face kind of thing. It is. Um, is that the, is the not... Clementine one? No, or is it a different no, one? No, it's this. No. Have I got one here? Yeah, I've got one here. Hang on. It's, it's that one, mate. Uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I haven't tried it with that one. But, yeah, I reckon. I, I don't think you can go wrong. Give it a go. Yeah, um, if you like that tonic and you like the rum, I think it'll work. All right, let's get some... I've made my ice, oh no, I was going to say I've made my ice cubes too big, but uh, this is off camera, so you won't be able to see this. <laughs> oh no, we could, we could. Hang on, let's get a smaller ice cube. I really want to try. See, my favourite out of the, um, oh, that'll melt in there. My favourite out of the uh, Stratford sodas is the tropical one. I love that mm -hmm. tropical. Yeah. Uh, and I've got, I've got one. high hopes for this. This could be pretty special. Yeah. Uh, so it should have enough left in here, I think. Right, so let's do this one. So we'll do that one with your citrus first. So I'm doing this in every... Because Katie and Dan were awesome last week or the week before, whenever it was. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing the Stratford, it... Str Stratford soda test in every rum now. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, these are great. It's what I love, you know. It's like having... You know, there's some awesome mixers out there, but to have a, a finally have a dedicated mixer for rum or a brand mm -hmm. for rum, I think is pretty... Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So, right. So this is the citrus. This is obviously going to be work. Good work. So it's going to be a long daiquiri, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's delicious. Yeah. Oh god, it's so good. Actually, that's. Oh, that's really good. Now that's interesting. So with the with the tonic, the Mediterranean tonic, I kind of get that creamy, the vanillary, but um buttery mm -hmm. kind of finish to that on the mm -hmm. tonic but with the citrus it's all jamaican mm -hmm. that's really bizarre i'll have to i have to the smell is the smell is there but it's all jamaican on that it's sort of that tropical yeah, yeah. funky kind of vibe on it that's really interesting actually i love that nice. that's delicious right let's try and melt this ice cube a little bit uh, and i'll see how many bottles i can get in my bag <laughs> um, and I, will, I will, I will be, dis I'll be distributing from New York. It seems. <laughs> it's true. Hey, yeah. It's all right. They, they, they'll, they'll look after you over in New York. Just go and see a couple of bars over there. Go yeah. To, yeah. Um, what's it called? Dead Rabbit. Go to the yeah. bartender bar. Have you been um, over I, there? I, I haven't. No. Is Dead Rabbit? A, <laughs> is it a good rum bar? Should I? It's, I it's the no. It. It's the it's the bartender bar in it. Okay. It's the, sure. It's sure. The big okay. famous. Um, Okay. Uh, right, so next up, we're going tropical. Let me just keep up with these comments because I keep losing track of the comic. Uh, Moxie, uh, Moxie, Dan, 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 Dan. Works quite well with ginger ale. I like that. Nice. Uh, uh, what's Carl saying? Just had it with citrus. Was that just had it with citrus? Really nice. Just gutted. I've now run out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's ordered a bottle, so he'll, he'll be back in stock nice. by the end of the week. Ready nice. for next right, weekend. So this is the tropical soda. I've got high hopes for this because I, lo I love this tropical. Right, hide that. Uh, George, cheers from San Diego. Nice. 
Uh, so Geraint has purchased the bottle as well. Nice, nice. Stuff. I tell you what, we I forgot about this. Let's put this back up on screen again so we can see. Uh, where is it? Uh, that one there. So hey, the website is there, streamer, streamertailrum.com. So go and yep. stock Archer there. So streamertailrum.com. And then this is that's the info you need just while I'm tasting this tropical soda. Right, chat. Let's go back to the chat. Come on, chit chat. There we go. Right, cool. So tropical soda. Oh, that's flipping good. Oh, that's that's the winner. I love this stuff. So, um, Do you pineapple. I love that. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. See, really interesting. The citrus, totally sort of the Jamaican nose on this, right? Mm -hmm. The tropical soda, I would say, goes back to that sort of Mediterranean tonic, that sort of buttery, vanilla mm -hmm. finish. That's really interesting. Totally different drinks. So I, I do like that, try. but yeah, I, I don't know. I can't. I don't know which one I prefer now. Lovely, lovely, Mix lovely, lovely. And then the third, yeah. Then the third one. <laughs> we're going to do the the hedgerow. I'm tempted to do the spice now. I should have actually done the spice. I've got enough. Give it a go. I think that I think that spice might be a bit too heavy. It's a bit feisty that one. Not not ginger beer feisty, but it's a bit feisty mm -hmm. than a ginger ale. Um, right, let's, let's scroll down. Uh, there, I won't far out. Look, 2,700 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? One one side of the US to the other up there. Christ. I won't far Where out. Where are you? Are you in, is Anne in LA? Uh, Oregon. Oregon, okay. Uh, yeah. I know exactly where she is, and I've completely forgotten. Uh, oh, I've completely forgotten. Just up from Portland. What's it called? It'll come to me in a bit. I, well, I should be saying that, really, but she's that way. <laughs> sure. I've caught up with... I've caught up with the comments. Nice. Neil's ordered as well. Let's put Neil on screen. Neil's ordered. Awesome. Thanks, we Neil. Like that. <laughs> nice. Jag Pimp. Fred, where are you, Jag Pimp? For those of you who didn't know, Jag Pimp is called Fred. Fred, where are you? Are you? I forget where you are in the US. That is nice, the hedgerow, but not my favourite. That's that's third place now. That's nice, right? Let's do, go on, then. let's do the spiced. Let's do the spiced. Stratford soda test. Okay, Jag Pimps in Arizona. Arizona. <laughs> there you go. Get your string the tail out. On the border of Oregon and California. Oh, good knowledge. <laughs> good knowledge. Oh, look at that. We're down to the last the last little drizzle in there now. Right. <laughs> You're not going down the spiced rum route then? <laughs> um, no, and I think that uh, quashed any investment opportunity from a particular venture capital oh, company. Oh, really? They said, am I going to do a spice? Wow. And I said, no, <laughs> it goes goes against the core of my being. Um, so, uh, that, wow. I, that was the end, that was the end of that meeting. Um, but you know, it's not me, it's not what I want to do. Um, and I'm not going to do it just for a uh, commercial gain. I know lots of people drink spiced rum, um, but that's not what this is about. Um, it's about showing people that you don't have to add stuff to good quality spirit. You can just enjoy it as it is. Is, is this going to be your brand going forward then streamer tail is it going to be like variants off that so you've got the white rum you're going overproof or you're going different i think uh yeah i think i hadn't thought that far ahead um i think i'll <laughs> i'll yeah i think the idea behind streamer tail was was to be unaged gen, unaged sort of white rums and i think if i start to look into aging i'll probably do I'll probably do that under a separate brand, but I think right. I'll keep Streamer Tail on the clear, clear spirits. But uh, yeah, at the moment, uh, hang I've on got... a bit. So, so you're saying you said plural then, clear spirits. So I know there's the overproof coming, but is there more Again, to sort of share here or not? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I wish there was. <laughs> there might be at some point. Uh, I'm doing it each day as I come, Steve. I've got two blends. 
uh, at the moment and I hope to launch many, many more. But at the moment, yeah, I've got this one and the overproof. And wow. yeah, maybe once I've got that launched, I'll be looking to to see what else I can do. Um, but yeah, I like, I, I think what, what drew me to uh, launch this was I thought that there was a little bit of space for someone to come in with it and show people a bit more about white rum. Uh, so that was what the purpose behind this brand. And then, and then yes, when, if I ever get around to aging and things, so, so I'm a bit too so, impatient for aging, but so, so, <laughs> mission, what's your, so I'm just putting these back to front cause I've seen a certain Katie, uh, in the comments. <laughs> so Miss Stratford soda is, is, is with us. Oh, yeah. Hello Katie. Uh, <laughs> so what's kind of your, Sum up your mission statement then. Is it just purely to get white rum in front of people and sort of because I'm a big passionate one. I think white rum should be sipped because there's some mm -hmm. belters out there, absolute mm -hmm. belters. And it's it's just this forgotten about thing. Is that your yeah. mission? Is that I think it was to challenge people's perceptions of white rum. It was to challenge the brands that everyone's heard of that have maybe not done the uh, not done the best for white rum's reputation. I'm not going to say any names, but it was. It Go was on, we'll do it. <laughs> you can do so in the comments. Um, but it was, it was, but yeah, to try and open Duffy, people. Duffy open people White. Eyes. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Steve. <laughs> to, be fair, to be fair, it's not too bad. I can say yeah, it. Yeah, it's good. It is good. It is good. I've tried it. Um, yeah, it was, it was to challenge. Yeah, it was more, yeah, to open people's eyes to white rum. Um, and, yeah, spread, spread the, the, good love the vibes the good not the knowledge um yeah just open people's eyes and get people to be just have a good time and and explore and try something new and and not be uh and not be put off by past precon or be, by preconceptions um yeah and i think rum is a, is a, is a, it's a fun world to be a part of it's hugely diverse everyone i've met in the rum world is 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 lovely like you drink rum because you're having a good time you're 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 socializing you're partying you're listening to good music you're with friends i mean i think rum has has really positive associations with it and that's basically what drew me to the industry um and why i sort of decided to go down this route um so yeah i think just my mission statement open people's eyes to white rum and and have a have a good time doing it it's basically as simple as that bravo bravo <laughs> we like that thanks it's, uh, but you know there's i th i'm tr i'm trying to think of the white rum that really op i mean plantation 3 i mean just to talk generally i think plantation mm -hmm. 3 stars is that kind of rum to open people's eyes but mm -hmm. not many people would contemplate drinking that neat no. i still don't think that is a white rum that people mm. thought oh yeah i'm gonna have a glass of that tonight it mm -hmm. certainly isn't for me it's a cracking sort of mixing mm -hmm. rum cocktail rum but it's not i'm trying to th sort of think what i mean the what the one for me was, was actually kube ron kube and it's kind of sipping that it's like trying mm -hmm. it. it's like wow i can actually have that that's that's really nice have but then got any Clarence behind there that the... I, I don't a, a garite's eyes will light up now i Go i ahead. said it was a couple uh, what's the brand renegade mm -hmm. um if you yeah. tried the renegade stuff that's really it, opened my eyes um yeah. but oh, at manchester runfest as well it was the mm -hmm. two clarins on the opposite side dean had them mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. chat, and it's the first time i had them and wow they were mm -hmm. really really good so it's a rabbit hole i'm yet to go down yeah, um, but we will be doing that very, very soon. I'm going to try and get Dean to come on and do a Claring mm. night because that sure. there's some phenomenal stuff there, yeah. and um, uh, Andy as well from not Saint Benevolence. What's what's his brand? I don't know. Uh, Dutch brand Skylark guys. Okay, yeah, I've completely uh, forgotten William, what his brand William is. George. William, William George. There we go. You know. Brands like that, mm -hmm. that are, and like this, I I now put this in the same sort of bracket as those brands because this is a belting rum. I love rums. We I've said it already on the stream. Rums with layers it kind of mm -hmm. take you on that journey through the sort of the front of the palate, the mid palate, the finish. That that's what I love. I absolutely love those sort of things. Mm -hmm. uh, I, that's definitely one because of those blends. Loving that. Loving that. 
Uh, so, Tom, I think this is a bit of banter. Uh, Tom is uh, uh, any chance you can do do it a sherry cask as opposed to a spiced? <laughs> yeah, I'd be I'd be way more open to that than a spiced. Um, Interesting. Bit bit more down the line though. Depends depends yeah. how much uh, how much you all order tonight. <laughs> it might, yeah, might exactly. speed things up a bit. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So, so crack on, get some more bottles in there. Uh, don't please don't strip the colour if you age. Why not, mm. Wendy? Why not? Chill for... Is this... No, because this is all unnatural. Well, is that, so is up to... it is... Well, the Trini, the Angostura is three-year age and it's being charcoal filtered. Um, right, okay. That's, is it... It's more for... Is it actually that? Similar. Or is yeah. it... It's similar. It's a different, similar. It's a different blend. Yeah. Right, yeah. okay. Um... But unfortunately, I had no say in that. If I wanted to use, if I wanted to use the Trini, the three, the younger store three, or, or the Trini, the, the three year aged, that was all I could get, all I could add to the blend. But maybe it's something to consider for for future blends, of course. Because yeah, I think it would be nice to have a little bit of, of color to to sort of show that there has been a slight, that there is a bit of aging in the blend. But um, yeah, that wasn't the option at the time, unfortunately. No, um, uh, Katie, right, Kate, what's Katie saying? Katie's giving you some love, I think. I'm not nice. saying because Stream Mattel is my favourite go to at the moment. Well, I'm, I'm not. Oh, was that a comment that I missed? What? Glad we met in Manchester Run Festival. Super excited about the overproof. So that's, Kate, that's Katie from Stream Mattel, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, from Stratford. Uh, for, yeah, for, sorry, from yeah, Stratford. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's, call, let's call her Katie for Let's upset down. It's Katie from Stream Mattel. <laughs> Katie, you still haven't changed your surname yet, darling. You need to do that. Uh, <laughs> right. If there's any more questions for Archie, then uh, let's have them. Let's 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 get there. Um, is there anything we've not chatted? I think we've we've covered the the, the um, I was going to say the flower, the bird. We've mm -hmm. covered the stream of tail. We've covered the rum blends. You know, I th I think it's fantastic. You know, I've I I would quite happily have my bar behind here with like loads of different white rums because they're so diverse so diverse really really tasty i think my favorite drink actually the daiquiri is the daiquiri is really really good but my favorite drink is that citrus i think citrus. Yeah. i've just edged that over the tropical nice it's funny because it's the citrus that kind of leaves me with those jamaican vibes I have to try one. Yeah, I like, I off. like that. I like that. The spice. I don't think I said anything about the spice. The spice is nice. It's a nice rounded drink. I don't. I think the spice level in there just overpowers that rum slightly. That I think the spice for me would need to sit with a more robust mm -hmm. aged rum, if you like. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a good. It's a cracking drink. It could be. I'm saying, I'm saying this nicely. It could be any rum in there for the moment, me at the moment. Uh, in that, whereas the trop, whereas the citrus and the tropical, that really does shine through. And to be fair, the Mediterranean tonic, still a shout for that. That's a, that's not even on camera. That's a, that's a great, great shout. It is, a, it is a good drink. People are very always how, surprised. How did you find that? Just out of interest. I, um, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, I don't like super sweet mixers. Um, right, and so I was looking at at alternatives to the standard, yeah, the standard rum and cokes and rum and gingers, uh, and I thought let's try it with tonic. I I don't know, I, and so I, yeah, and it was a revelation, and everyone who's tried it since has has been really pleasantly surprised. I think yeah, it's 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 good. Um, it was a happy accident, but yeah, mainly because I didn't like the super sweet mixes, and that's why I think with the Stratford it works because they're 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 not they're not too sweet either. Um, yeah. Which of the citrus one was works really well with. Yeah, they're really um, good. Uh, that, that, that's just made me chuckle. That he's <laughs> gonna he's gonna sneak his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Next time she wants to yeah. on it, he's gonna sneak that in instead. I'll see what she ask says. Ask her what gin, what gin she thinks it is. <laughs> No, that's a bad thing. No. <laughs> Do we not cool. say the G word on here? <laughs> oh, I've got it banned in my Discord. Like, there's a little Fair bot enough. that comes up and, and shouts at them, don't mention okay. the G word. Uh, yeah. So, 
I'm going to put this up on screen for one uh, final time. I'm not going anywhere, boys and girls. Uh, Archie, you're more than welcome to stay on if you want, uh, but I'm. We can let you go um, and do that. So sure. that's that's Archie. Streamertailrum dot com, uh, and that is that code once again for people. Barman Steve, ten percent off until Wednesday midnight, give or take. You know, I'll put twenty three fifty nine. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So yeah, get involved in that. That is a fantastic fantastic rum um i've got a tiny little bit to have a little bit more neat it's, it's fantastic i don't know whether it's so i just leaving it a little bit longer in the glass mm -hmm. it, so the the jamaican kind of disappears a little bit and it is more that sort of creamy bearing in mind that's been out now what's the time close to an hour and a half i did have a little mm -hmm. top up actually to be fair but that's been out for a good 45 minutes as a top up. Love rums like that. I'll have another top with you. <laughs> I think because of that spice in there, I think it punches a lot higher than 40% ABV as well. Mm. This, People are this surprised is the that it's only 40. This is, I was just going to say, this is the fascinating thing I've just um, sort of done with this whole white rum journey. There's bizarrely, there's a few white rums behind me that really surprised me. They were like 37.5%. And I didn't notice, and it wasn't until I tried them, and I was like, wow, that's a bit wishy-washy. There's like nothing mm. to it. And mm -hmm. then looked at the ABV, and it's 37.5. And then you try mm. it's To me, it's that difference between 37.5 and 40. There's a huge mm. taste difference. But mm -hmm. between 40 and 42, not so much, mm -hmm. which I find a bit... I don't know. That's just what I'm finding at the moment. But yeah, obviously, when, it... obviously, when you get up to 45, 46, there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. But 37 point, there's some real wishy washy stuff out there. That's it just... depends what's in the blend as well. I think, yeah, I think if you're if you're using predominantly pot still, they hold they hold a lot more flavour than than the column stills. And I think if your column still That's is true. generally a lot lighter, so if you are if it is a sort of 37.5 or 40% column still rum, it is probably going to be quite a lot lighter yeah. and, um, dare I say, less flavoursome. Um, but, yeah. You you dare. Of course you dare. You <laughs> I know. I, yeah, <laughs> I know. What, what's your – come on, let's, let's put you on the spot. What's your least favourite brand? Come on, do it. <laughs> um, probably Morgan Spiced, sadly. What? Oh, boo! <laughs> yeah, I get it. I, I, I've, still, I've still got a bottle up here. Fair it's enough. Done, but, but, it serves yeah. a, it serves a purpose, uh, and yeah, lots of people like it. That's fine. If you, but it if is. You had, go on. Uh, sorry, I'm going to butt in here. I've just got questions here. No, if you fine. had two or three friends come round, they'd never drunk rum before. Obviously, mm -hmm. you're going to put that in front of them. Obviously, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but how would you kind of? Was it easy like, for, for you, going back to you, thinking of personal stories, was it easy for you to go from Morgan Spiced, say, to Ray and Nephew? Because I can imagine for a lot of people, that's like a whole baptism of fire. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, I always drunk Ray and Nephew mixed um, when I was drinking it. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was easy. I think it was, it was just the, the, vibe the parties that i was going to that was sort of yeah i, I like i i did love uh the feeling that rare nephew g gave you uh, <laughs> the buzz. <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a different kind of feeling to, to a lot of other <laughs> runs and uh yeah was it, it was, so when you were drinking it mixed was it the, the sort of stereo are you talking about back in the uk now at yeah University? yeah back yeah. in the uk yeah yeah was, was it that, like that stereotypical sort of rum ting Thing. Rum and ting. Rum, yeah. I did. I drank. I drank a lot of rare and coke as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what? What is it out there then? What do they drink out there? I think. Um, I, I think you said it earlier. But yeah, I they. Sorry. They. It's drunk with everything. Um, so I saw people having a rare nephew in milk. I have. I saw people pouring a shot into Guinness, um, and then there was boom. Uh, boom which is a sort of energy drink a flat energy yeah, drink right. yep uh, and they call that the Jamaican Viagra uh, if you drink Ray, <laughs> Ray, Ray and Boom uh, supposedly keeps you going for a long time um. so we need to, so right I'm, we're thinking here we're thinking further advanced here so obviously Ray 
with Ting. They've got the whole Ting Ray thing going mm-hmm. on. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing for your drink? Your your sixty when this this is there, but I'm talking about your fifty seven percent of. Like when it yes. comes out, we've we've okay. got to come up with a, a a like a collaborative kind of yes. streamer tail sting in the tail. Can't, I don't know. I'm useless yeah. at naming stuff, but we ne- we need to think of something to take the UK by storm. Like a, whole, yes. a whole new drink thing. We will. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, <laughs> Not <yeah>. now. <laughs> no, there's a lot a lot of pressure to put on us right now. Um, weirdly, I started putting it in uh, what uh, like wheat beer. A shot of rum in wow. yours in your in wheat beer. Is it the wheat beer that's quite sort of got a sort of bananary taste to it? Um, some I don't know. I'm not sure. A... Uh, yeah, I was experimenting with that because I, I had a, I had a sort of beer cocktail which had sort of rum and a beer in it. What and I was like, I want to try somewhere. I want to try Streamer Tail with with a beer. And I thought because Streamer Tail's got a bit of bananary taste and some wheat beers uh, have a bit of bananary taste, so I put a shot in there. It worked. Yeah, if you're feeling experimental wow. on a Saturday afternoon, um, give it a go. Interesting. I'm now I'm now thinking like maybe you know, kind of detract a little bit, but I'm now thinking sort of like a a bananary kind of daiquiri mm. serve. For mm-hmm. you. Banana daiquiri. K- yeah. K- I've just seen a comment there from Katie, but I was going to uh, so Katie's put keep your keep your eyes peeled for the next edition of the pairing guide stream to tell 100% be made oh, on there nice. but Thanks, Katie. Katie Katie what i'm thinking you should do is like a banana soda type mm. thing no one's ever yeah. done that that could no. be amazing that is oh, a good... there's a co- there's potential collab going on there isn't mm. it yeah banana. for sure but not does that work <laughs> banana mixer no one's ever done it before so i'm assuming it doesn't work but <laughs> Oh, I could, I from here I could hear Katie's brain cells ticking now. Thinking mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> that, could, that could be fascinating, or am I just talking yeah, about the no, backside? No, it, no would be. I, are you thinking, just humouring me now? No, I was thinking earlier about so how to make a banana sort of syrup. I'm not, I'm not from a bartending background, um, but since obviously launching a rum brand, I've had to learn pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I was thinking how I can make a sort of banana syrup. So. Well, if anyone I mean, knows, I've I've not got it here, but I mean, through the other channel drink stuff that I do, obviously mm-hmm. I've got access to every flipping. Oh yeah, so they, mon- do they have mon- a do they have a mon- banana? Yeah, mon- they, okay. they have, but they've also got um, George at William Fox. Uh, it's also got his mm-hmm. banana syrup as well, which I haven't okay. got here. So you've nice. got that syrup thing, which people mm-hmm. at home don't mind too much buying mm-hmm. because they are sort of semi long life shelf stable. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've got, if it's here somewhere, which one is it? Uh, which yellow one is it? Is it that one? I mean, I've got that, banana puree. I've got that here. But okay. I know that's going to overshadow, and Monin have mm-hmm. got a version of that as well. So sure. that's a puree. I know mm-hmm. that's going to overshadow the rum. It mm-hmm. then becomes a generic mm-hmm. rum, if you like. What I'm, do you I'm use thinking, that for? Uh, t- sort of tiki cocktails. Sure. Banana, banana daiquiris and that sort of stuff, or banana coladas. But it is... It is like banana puree. So what mm. I'm saying, when you use stuff like this, it detracts from the rum. What I'm thinking for you, for like a banana soda, banana mixer, is just like mm-hmm. subtle, like these, like the Stratford stuff. You know, a little, a, a little bit of banana, but not overpowering banana. If you know what I mean. Tom, Tom thinks you 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 know where that he you might be able to find a banana, Steve. <laughs> now, what's it all? I've I've just that uh, Steve giving away all, all our plans. What's this? <laughs> Uh, do you want first fig and plum or banana? Uh, Katie, I, th- I think, but, sorry, I, I randomly put that on screen. I didn't even know I was clicking on that. So so Katie did share to us that she's coming up with a fig and plum mixer next. Uh, mm. why th- I, 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 Katie, why, why limit yourself to one? Just go with two, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm quite, f- oh, flip it down. Go on, beer, beer and run. Oh, get them. Hide, right, there we go. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm intrigued by a banana mixer. I won't lie. I'm not convinced it's going to be the next big thing, but I'm intrigued. Uh, <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Uh, grapefruit will work. Ting. Yeah, grapefruit, grapefruit soda. That's that's um, that's a go-to. Uh, Steve has a little a little stubby banana. Uh, yeah, we've got a couple. Uh, we've got banana bomb. Um. 
and we've got uh, Cargo Cult. Cargo Cult for me is obviously a little bit better. Is that yeah. is that banana? Is... Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, Steve McGarry, who was sure. at Beanley, um, mm. he's now bought out, at, as in physically, monetary wise, he's bought out Cargo Cult. So he's a uh, Sydney okay. rum company, but he's then bought out the ownership of Cargo Cult. Um, and actually, that actually is banana flavored, uh, mm -hmm. as in as in like real banana banana skins. Actually, mm -hmm. use the flavor. But again, I'm, uh, that's a, that's a banana rum, mm -hmm. and I'm talking like a mm -hmm. banana. Yeah, to compliment. So. Yeah, that I think that's uh, yeah. I've got yeah. I've got my little uh, banana sheaf. Oh yeah. I f yeah. So we forgot about that. Uh, where's my banana? There it is. But oh, do you know what? That last little bit. That last little bit, just while you're here, I'm going to do another little daiquiri. So I've got Gifar, the, the oh, best yeah. banana liqueur on the okay, planet. Sure. The premium, the posh mm -hmm. one. I have to get some. I don't know how much. I don't know how much is left in here, but let's try. Uh, oh, am I going to get thirty mil? Oh, I've got thirty mil. I've got thirty mil. Right. So uh, let me just put this away. Little banana daiquiri. Boom, boom, boom. Right. Banana Dax. I think this could be epic. I don't want to overshadow it too much, but I've got 30 mil of uh, the stream itself. And the bottle's, the bottle's virtually dead. <laughs> right. So 30 mil. So I'm just going to do literally 5 mil of banana, if that. Just want a little subtle hint of banana. What have we got? Yep, perfect. He says, is that about right? Yeah, that'll be about probably closer to seven and a half mil, if I'm honest. Right. Okay, now let's deal with that later. Uh lime juice. Mark, is there a is there a DMF banana? They do oh, have the is that what he's talking about? Sorry, I've forgotten about that. Sorry. My fucking cute this is what they they sent me that for my birthday present as well, oh. the cheeky little buggers. Sure. Yeah, so there is here. Well, they have. Sorry, every, that every, the little stubby. I've got it now. Every flavor under the sun, they have. <laughs> right. I've been to. Go. I think so, they've got a. They've got a bar in Bristol. That, um, yeah, it's allegedly um, distilled there. I used to love Sam Cornish. I, you know, open honestly. I used to love Dead Man's Fingers. Dead Man's Fingers 1.0 was absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we're up to 7.0 or whatever version it's on. There's redistilled random Caribbean rum. You know, I think. And then they uh, ship, ship over whatever the hell they've got and uh, redistill it in Bristol. Mm -hmm. They did a lot better than me at a Christmas market not long ago. <laughs> well, um, yeah, but. Yeah. They've um, got the marketing power, they've got the budget, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they dropped they yeah. dropped something ridiculous, like a hundred grand on launching D DMF hemp. And I mean, okay, nice. Yeah, that didn't last long, did it? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna. Uh, Tom, nice I'm little... thirty-one. Thirty-two on the twenty-eighth. Uh, so yeah, next Sunday. Ah, next Sunday. Oh, yeah. Sun yeah. Oh, a little Virgo baby. Oops, what am I doing? Yeah. And I'll be at Nottingham Carnival if you're around. Oh. <laughs> and then Limon Beach Club afterwards. Are they having a carnival after party? Yeah, Limon do. I think, might, I think have, he is, anyway. might, might have to be there. <laughs> yeah, it's on my way home. I was, I was supposed to be there last... Uh, my, where was it? Last Tuesday oh, yeah, for on that insurrection. Run day. Yeah. yeah, I never made it down there. But, nice. Right, so this is a very subtle and cheeky banana daiquiri. Seven point, it's a half daiquiri. So 30 mil of streamer tail, uh, 15 mil of lime juice, 7.5 mil of uh, banana, and 5 mil of sugar syrup. That little bit of banana is fantastic. Katie, I tell you what, if you've got a subtle banana mixer, that's that's going to be interesting. You don't lose the rum. You mm -hmm. really don't. I have to try that. Mm. 
I think it might be better with like a Monin banana syrup mm. or yeah, William okay. Fox banana syrup because mm. then you've got the the sugar and the the sugar and the flavour all in one, mm-hmm. as opposed to liqueur and a bit of sugar. Is the difference alcoholic? Is that got what's the ABV on the? Giffa, on... Yeah, this is uh, the posh one. So twenty twenty five percent ABV. Okay, sure. So it's th- I mean, it's really good, really yeah. really good. Uh, he says he's got the got the oh, seal with that. Yeah. Right. Any other happy birthday for next week? Oh, they're all giving you. Thanks, uh, Tom. <laughs> birthday love. Right, Decky. What's it? What's he doing? He's next to it. Can't expect Steve to keep stuff. <laughs> oh, cheeky. I don't. I don't know how much is left in here. Actually, I oh, know it still rattles quite well. It's probably over half a bottle still left in there. Yeah, cheeky buggers. Having a banana daiquiri now. Where's the old stuff, Garayan? Old stuff. I'm an oldies man. I've got a, an old school collection. Started collecting oh. vinyl back at uni. I worked for a sound system up at up at Leeds. Um, yeah, used to buy the I like yeah the old stuff eighties eighties dance all original digital style uh, UK roots. But this is a rum this is a rum show, not a reggae show. Hey no that's no my, no you <laughs> you you go you go for it you chat that's that's awesome yeah yeah well that's I mean yeah my love my love of reggae got me into that the the culture. So I like, yeah, from the age of 14, fell in love with reggae. Uh, and that's what led me down this path. I mean, I'm obsessed with Scotch bonnets. I actually have a, a, a Scotch bonnet uh, jam brand as well, uh, which I do on the do side. Of, yeah, I do. Archer's Hot Jam. Um, wow. <laughs> which is another little passion of mine. Uh, but yeah, I think I may have been Jamaican in a previous life. Uh, <laughs> and So they um, asked me before. So while we're still on this subject, right, they... Mm-hmm. I was on a live stream last night uh, with Just Drinking. They were a US crowd, and they finished. The, I completely unprepared for it. They finished a stream asking me what my spirit animal was, and I was just mm-hmm. like, uh... "And these guys, I forget who it was now, told asked me to ask you before you left what your spirit animal is." And I think mm-hmm. now is an appropriate time to drop that question. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Um, can I be a? a this a was spirit? me last night. <laughs> A spirit, other culture. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd, uh, yeah. I mean, the I obvious reckon... answer is going to be the streamer tale, but yes, I, I think you've probably got a better answer than that somewhere. Uh, reggae. Yeah. Yeah. What, Jamaican. What, what? Yeah. What animals like reggae? <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and it totally threw me last night as well. I was like, uh, okay, what did I say? I said uh, a panda, and then I went to a koala bear because they're cuddly. <laughs> sure. Well, I'm I'm probably a very gentle lion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should have been because I'm a Leo, so I should have said lion. But oh, I just thought yeah. I just went. I just thought panda for some other reason. I don't know why. Mm. Wow. Hang on. So what's 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 Grant saying? He's got five hundred thousand vinyl, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's he's not great at right. the old uh, typos. Well, I will come come round yours with a bottle of rum. With my, yeah. I've only got, I've only got a couple of hundred vinyl, but I'll come around with a bottle of rum and yeah, have yeah. a session. It's not, a, it's not a million miles away from you. He's, he's like Romford way. So okay. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, just yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Fair, yeah, straight through London, but Archie, yeah. Ar- Archie on the decks when we visit Windy in Pembrokeshire. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I go to Pembrokeshire every now and then. Do you? So, Windy, who's been very quiet tonight, but Windy's just moving out there. Uh, I won't tell you what his real name is, because it's a secret, but he's called sure. Windy. Uh, we got into reggae 1950s USRB, R&B, I'm assuming. No, I don't know what that means. Uh, so, Prince Buster. I'd say. That's lost on me now. <laughs> yeah, moving away. Moving into the reggae. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I tell you what, mate. It's half past nine. It's Sunday yep. night. I'm All gonna right, let Steve. You know. Thank, Thank you. you so Thanks so, so much, much, everyone. And just while you're signing off, let's just put this back on screen again. So streamertailrum.com, uh, and you can get that one. Yeah, you can get your ten percent off by Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday midnight, essentially. Uh, Thanks, but that's everyone. been Archie. Thank you very very Thank much you, for Steve. that. Thank you for doing this. I hope everyone enjoyed around. it. Yeah, Uh, and I will see you, speak to you very, very soon. All right. Cheers. Cheers, mate.
Bye. And for all you lot, I'm staying here so we can chat. We can have some banter. I've got a few other rums that we can taste. Let me take Archie off there. Lovely, jubbly. Right. Uh, and let's remove that. So that was Archie. That was cool. Do you know what? I'm. We've we've killed two bottles between us, which is awesome. Um. So that's you know. I really, really like that. Can we, do you want to be honest now that he's gone? <laughs> no, just, I can still see him there. Look, um, well, I know we'll be chatting about this in the Discord afterwards, but I, I really, really like that. And I'm I'm completely with uh, Archie there. I think White Rums, my experience over the last sort of three or four weeks, uh, doing like doing all these White Rums and daiquiris, tasting them neat and all that. I'm sure most of you have seen last week's video now where... Like that was trying the um the Santa Teresa the Santa Teresa for the first time the Diplo uh, Planas for the first time. What was the other one? There was another one in there. Uh, Methuselah, wherever that is. I've, if, you, if you haven't noticed, I've had a rearrange as well. Uh, Methuselah for the first time. Platino revisiting Brugal. You know, while they're not that expensive, there are some belters there in the white rum sort of um. Uh, category, if you like, absolute belters there. Um, I've seen Katie's comment as well. Beyond uh, banana soda, I, do you know what? I don't know my my business head. So personally, my kind of palate and my cocktail brain and my my drinking brain is thinking banana soda. That's going to be awesome. My business brain is thinking banana soda. That's not going to sell. <laughs> So I was so conflicted with that, but I, I don't know. I think banana, if you get a banana soda just right with a product like that, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm here now for whatever, a good half an hour or whatever. We can still chat about whatever. Uh, I've got a few of Havana Steve's coming up next week. Uh, sorry, I've got a few. Sorry, my brain's going at 100 miles an hour now. Uh, I, I'm not... I'm, deliberately not talking about next week yet because it's not 100% set in stone. I think I know what's going to happen. Uh, it basically was chatting about it at four o'clock on Friday afternoon. And obviously replies haven't happened yet because it was end of the working week. So I can probably go uh, public with it on Monday or Tuesday, I'm hoping. Uh, so there's, I think there's a plan for, we. I'm, I'm definitely going to be on there next Sunday, Bank Holiday Sunday, but, uh, and I think we might have a brand, we might have a brand, but uh, all will be revealed as and when. But what I was going to say is I've got Havana Steve's samples that he sent to me, New Grove uh, blend, uh, Royal blend, and I've got the Bundy OP here, which I'm more than willing to crack open now if Havana Steve is here, uh, which he is, so I can see him there. All the best to uh, stream a tail. Uh, let me just catch up with some of these comments. Lovely, easy drinking white rum. Uh, nothing not to like here. I think it's a cracking. Really, really good. Really, really good. Uh, Windy. Uh, his rum's great. I thought it was really sweet. My order was number 51. Let's hope it's the th in the thousands when I reorder. <laughs> Oh, bless. Right. Uh, Karen, this is what I like. My eyes have been open to white rums. Haven't had any with Coke yet, but I will. Um, yeah, so Karen, I, f I, f I think I remember what you ordered. So for you guys that have ordered um, uh, some extra samples from me, they are sitting, Postman's going to collect actually tomorrow. Uh, so they'll be winging its way. Karen, if I'm not mistaken, weren't you? I'm going to get this wrong now, aren't I? I think I might get this wrong. I'm sure one of you's got like the Santa Teresa Claro and the Diplo in the same. No, oh, I don't know who that was. But for me, white rum wise, there are definitely white rums behind the bar that I would have with Coke. A hundred percent. Don Q I'd have with Coke. Uh, Angostura Reserva I'd have with Coke. Um, to be fair, the Ron Cuba, Ron de, uh, Santiago de Cuba, I probably have with Coke. Um, the Plantation Three Stars, I would have with Coke. Diplo Planas, I would probably have with Coke. Um, Bacardi, I would have with Coke. 
But I think when you taste the Montagna, I'm just looking, I would probably have with Coke. That probably it's a bit expensive to be having with Coke, but I'd probably have it with Coke. I've still got these on now. I don't need these. Ooh, that's different. These are noise cancelling headphones. And I'm like talking at oh Jesus. Now let me just reacclimatize to the actual uh, <laughs> the volume out here. Um so uh, yeah, Montagna I'd have oh that sounds so different. <laughs> So Montagna, I'd have a Coke. But when you get tasting some of these white rums, you'll know exactly what I mean. When you taste it, you'll be like, yeah, that's 100% more suited towards a daiquiri, towards a mojito, towards the citrus or the tropical soda. You know, that for me, 100%, I haven't got any left now. Yeah. Tiny, tiny. Oh, let's, let's, see if, let's see if we can finish the bottle. There's little dribbles in there. And tiny, tiny little dribble left in there. You know, this for me is 100% not a Coke rum and Coke rum. That's not saying white rums aren't rum and Coke rums, but. Yeah, just, just not for me. Right. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say too much more because that would spoil. Um, I'm sure it's Tuesday. I think that was Paul Tuesday. Right. So, Karen, my eyes have been well and truly open to white rums. Haven't had any with Coke yet, but going to. Uh, Havana Steve-O. White rum have been before. What? White rum before seeing Steve Vids were totally off the menu for me. Ah, oh, hang on. Steve. Uh, Steve, you've got this one, didn't you? I'm sure. I'm sure you guys. No. What did you buy? Oh, I'm not sure what you've got. I think you might have the other one. I think you might, I think you guys bought that, didn't you? I tell you what, that, that one I've just held up, what you guys bought me for my birthday, that is a stunning white rum to drink me. That is, I mean, it's, let's be honest, it's 14 years old, so <laughs> it's going to be a stunning white rum. But yeah, uh, I can see a comment from Grant. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. Right. Uh, oh, that is the next one. That is the next comment. Right. Uh, blown away by that and the lazy dog. Steve, amazed you have never tried the ST White. Is that the Santa Teresa ST White? I'm assuming that's the ST White. What's ST? ST S Santa. I'm assuming that means Santa Teresa White. Um, yeah. A I'm not, I'm not going to say anything more until after uh, the video that's coming out next week because that is the blind tasting. But, you know, it's... <laughs> it's just, look, it's, it's that thing. But, you know, I've been... People, I, I've been on this rum journey now for a year but, and people get confused by that because I've been drinking rum most of my adult life since I was 18 but haven't properly appreciated rum. So, yes, I've known that there's... A big difference between Bacardi, Havana three year old, and Plantation three stars, and to a certain extent, Flor de Carnia. But they were essentially my four white rums. They covered all the bases. I had a rum and coke, I had daiquiris, I had mojitos. That was my basis covered. What I didn't appreciate for them was actually sipping them neat. And they're probably not the best examples to sip neat, but they're great starter rums. To Sydney, sorry, in the Kube as well. Um, but the Kube again, you know, a Kube is another one I've had in my collection for a lot of years because JBE, you know, big good friends with JBE John, and he's, he's hooked me up with that. Uh, and I'd just never given it the love it deserved. And it wasn't until I really got properly got on this rum journey and started learning about styles of rum, learning about how they produce, learning about blends, learning like what goes into Cuban rum, like why Cuban rum is different to Dominican Republic and Nicaragua and all that sort of stuff. That's when this whole thing has kind of exploded for me. So, yeah, I've honestly never tried, I'm assuming that's what we mean, but never tried Santa Teresa Claro. Um, never seen it. Uh, never seen it at rum shows or anything like that to actually physically try it and chat to a brand. They've just never been about. Flor de Cania, I've seen Flor de Cania at more bar shows dating back early, well, actually mid-2000s, 2005, 6, 7, um, 
more than I've ever done Plantation, more than I've ever done Bacardi and Havana. Florida Carnia, for me, are probably the biggest brand that, I can, that I've seen consistently over the last sort of 10, 12 years or so. Well, probably closer to 15 years. So yeah, it's been some uh, been some revelations over the last few weeks. Uh, Mark was great, uh, loved it, and I could sip it neat. Yeah, definitely. Tanner, hello Tanner. Sorry if you've been on a while. I've just seen I've just seen your name pop up. Banana and coconut. Uh, oh, is that what us? We love the idea of banana coconut. Interesting, interesting, Katie. Interesting. A little brain cells are ticking. I've got to move these bottles because my camera is obscuring the... There we go. We can see comments, Bell. Uh, oh, Decky, that's an interesting shout. See, again, number one, that's an interesting shout because, again, for me, that is definitely not a Coke rum for me. It's too grassy. It's too vegetal. Veg, veg, vegetal. Grassy citrus floor. That for me is not a rum and coke rum. So, so I'm totally interested in that comment. Uh, granted, that is the number two. Hundred percent is a rum and coke rum. Totally different vibe. But then again, it's in sort of in a more a higher aged rum if you want. Duppy, duppy white rum. Uh, not a stereotypical Jamaican rum. That is a hundred percent a rum and coke. Kingston sixty two. 100% rum and coke. Um, but yeah, no, the signature blend. No, not, not for me. Not for me. This just shows how everyone's different, which is awesome, isn't it? Uh, that's, oh, that's the new word for it. Brutal. That's what we're calling it. Brutal. <laughs> it's not going to do it justice, but brutal. I like that. The order of the brutal string. <laughs> Like that. Uh, uh, hi, Claire. I've done the same with my old shape. I just, I don't know what Claire's. Oh, hang on. I've missed a big comment there. What was that? Right, that's the reply. I'll just let Sarah smell. Sarah. She uh, found banana. Uh, I forgot to put the lid on. Making the banana daiquiri, shoot the bowl all over his shoulder, not the floor. <laughs> really. Uh, so that's what that reply is. Just done the same thing with my old shape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, each rum tells a story. Yes, I have both. Right. Uh, yes, 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 as well. Right. I know what that's responded to. That's awesome. Uh, as well as the lime purchase, the Secford Orange and Rosemary with Black Top tastes really good and not fizzy. Interesting. Raymond. Hello, Raymond. Oh, oh put the wrong one on the screen. Hang on. There we go. Neat obviously allows you to detect the in oh, there's a posh word, isn't it? In uh, can I even say that? Intricacies of the beverage. Wholeheartedly agree. Granted, you may not consume much in quantity that way. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, right, I understand that. Yeah, Raymond. Ober oh, Ober, I'm not even gonna pronounce that. I'm really sorry. If you if you if you haven't learned by now, I butcher people's names. <laughs> I'll, I'll just stick at Raymond. Uh, right, TF Tom, 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 Tom. I've been put off recently by ENA Sheer Blends. I've been put off recently by ENA Sheer Blends, but the streamer tower has swayed my mind back. Right, and this was this was a good conversation to have. Actually, I'd like to have this conversation more with brands because after listening to Carsten talk and speak and educate. It fascinates me because you've really got two camps that go to the likes of ENA Shear. You've got the, the camp that literally just see, and these are business people. These are absolute business people. They'll be looking at trends, whatever the trend is, whether it's cuddly toys, whether it's fidget spinners or pocket spinners or whatever they've got, they're called. They'll be looking at all these trends and they'll be thinking, right, how do we capitalize on this? How do we do this? How do we do this? So they'll be seeing, there'll be business people out there that have not drunk rum in their life um and they'll be seeing rum has just now ticked over a billion in the uk they'll be thinking that's going to double in the next 12 months how do we get any quick easy win a two percent share not even that like literally half a percent share of that how do we do that so they'll be they'll be researching 
obviously they're going to come and find Ian A. Shear. So they will literally send someone, it won't even be them, they will literally send someone to Ian A. Shear and say, I want to make a rum. I want a rum to produce into the UK. How can we do it? Uh, and they won't have a clue about blends. And you've got that type of people. They'll just go to Ian A. Shear. Ian A. Shear will obviously do it. They'll work with him and say, right, we'll do a bit of this, we'll do a bit of that. But essentially, they'll be talking to people that haven't got a clue about rum. So you've got that school of people. But on the flip side, you've got the people like Archie and a quite a few other brands. I'm pretty damn sure that Lost Years will be Ian A. Shear as well. I'm pretty, don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure that. I'm pretty sure the likes of uh, the Lovers and the Forza will be Ian A. Shear as well. Um, who else have we got beyond the bar? Uh, da, 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 da. There must be someone else I can think of easily without kind of. Oh, sorry. Um, but you, so you've got brands like that that know exactly what they want, exactly the kind of blends that they want, exactly the countries, uh, the islands, the age profiles. You get all that. So for people like Carsten and Ian A. Shear, those people are a dream to work off, and and they are going to be infinitely better run blends than the people that just go, well, I just want to capitalise. You know, I don't care what the rum is. I'm just going to add spiced compound to it and then we're going to sell it for 25 quid a bottle. You know, so, yeah. The, it, it's, it's interesting and fun to talk to real rum people that deal with e a Share that are not going to be scared about talking about e a Share because... You shouldn't be scared about talking about Ian O'Shea because they, as I say, time and time again, they are experts at what they do. So if you've got a rum that's come through Ian O'Shea, you've got a pretty good rum. The problem is if you haven't got that idea and concept in the first place, your your rum is only going to be as good as your idea. Um, so, yeah, you're going to have bad rums and you're going to have good rums. And that's not really Ian O'Shea's fault. That's... The business behind it, if that makes sense. Right. Uh, I like the grass notes in... I like the grass notes. Oh, we're talking about... That was the signature, wasn't it? The signature... Uh, the boutique rum company. So I like grass notes in Coke. Okay, interesting. I like the old-fashioned... To try rums, especially darker rums. Yeah, agree with that. Uh, or who was that? Greg. Was that Greg? Uh, yeah, it was Greg. Greg, um, talk us through them. Greg, just give us two rums. Two, right, I want... Greg, here's, here's a question for you, and this isn't going to be an in-depth answer. I want you to get, put two rums, and then beside it, I want you to add the sugar level or how much sugar you add. So, for instance, and I'm going to give, give you an example here that I would personally do. For instance, if I was making a rum fashioned with El Dorado 12-year-old, I would potentially add five mil of sugar syrup because that's for me, is a little bit sweeter rum. So five mil with ED12. But if I was going for something like, uh, what should we go for? Something like, uh, bad example. Uh, where should we go? Actually, something like Appleton 8, right? I would potentially add 10, maybe more mil of sugar. I'd add a bit more sugar because the rum is not as sweet. So I just want you to pick two of your favourite rums in, a, in an old-fashioned and just put how much sugar you add, just for me and for everyone else, just to kind of gauge it. Because we don't talk about rum fashions that often, I mean. And some, some rums don't need any sugar at all. You know, I personally don't think. You stir that down with some ice and some bitters, maybe. And I don't think you need any sugar in the Diplomatico. Um, but everyone's different. So that's going to be an interesting for you, uh, Greg. I'd like to uh, like to see that. That's a cool chat we've never really had properly. Uh, is Ian A... No, uh, Seal. Ian A is Richard Seal, blends Ian A. So, so obviously, Ian Burrell... Um, was that one first? Uh, Ian Burrell is really good friends with Richard Seal and Gail. Uh, Ian went to Richard with the idea. Um, basically, uh, I want this. So um, Ian's kind of had the idea. He wants to sort of blend African rums with his favourite kind of 
run, which is obviously, as he's really busy with uh, Richard Seal, is obviously going to be a uh, four-square run. So that's how Equiano is done. Richard Seal blends um, Equiano. And the same for uh, Veritas and Propertas. Richard Seal blends that as well. Um, because that, I'm not sure, I don't think that was his idea, actually. I forget whose idea this actually was. Uh, but yeah, he definitely blends that. Uh, yeah, I think that's, I think that's it. I think that's it. Something blatantly obvious to me, and I can, can't think for the life of me what it is. Another blend. It's not black top before anyone goes there. Right. Uh, top cheese, top cheese, top cheese. Guess I'm late to the party, but I managed to slam in like, slam in a like at the last time. Yes, good old boy. Uh, top cheese, do, you got your stream towel. What did you think to it? What is it? What does it taste like? Let's try Bundy OP. Let's do it. I need some water. I'm just starting to get a weird headache. The Bundy OP is right there. I think we've given um, given Casey uh, a bit of love. <laughs> Steve the Barman, Sunday Rum Day, sponsored by StratfordSodas.co.uk. What is it? Dot com. Dot co dot uk. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Unofficially sponsored. I'm just going to give them the love because they're flipping good sodas. I don't care. Right. No money has changed hands. Uh, right. Let's go for a Bundy OP. Right. I, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to do I'm going to do the uh, the amusing thing. So I've got normal Bundy. Here, the the best rum in the world. Look, all this rum behind me, all this, the four squares, the Dorleys, you know, the Mount Gays, they've got nothing on Bundy. Bundy's the pinnacle. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's the memories, isn't it? It's the me it's not it's not the best rum in the world, but it's the memories. If you've ever been to Australia, it's those memories. You cannot deny it's those memories, right? Ah, oh, singing bloody um, what's the Proclaimers song? And it was just, I don't know, it, it must still go on. But back in like two thousand, two thousand and one, the Proclaimers it, everywhere you went, every bar that you went into, the Proclaimers was just on. We would, I would have walked five hundred miles. But the thing is, if you ever been to Sydney, they've got Darling Arbor there. So all the backpackers and all that, you know, I would walk 500 miles just to be the, the, It goes through that. And then when it gets to the chorus, it goes, Darling Arbor, da, da, Darling Arbor. <laughs> it's just mental. Absolutely mental. Right. So Bundy. <laughs> I might as well just gulp that. <laughs> Wow, how strong is that? 37. Wow. Yeah, you notice the alcohol difference between that and a 40%er. Just keep, let's just keep stream tail on there. But it's lovely, you know. That's a rum and coke rum. That has got to be the pinnacle of rum and coke. It has to be. Right, so that's decent. Right, so that's Bundy. I've refreshed. I've, re I've refreshed what um, what Bundy tastes like. Right, hang on a minute. Uh, I'm just going to go. Uh, I'm just going to see. I'll, I'll come on to Greg in a minute. I've, I'm hovering over it, Greg. I've seen your sugar syrup on it. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to answer that. I've seen some comment about Katie getting married and all that, but um, oh, her name's changed. Right, I've got it. Right, so Bundy overproof. Uh, and this is from my brother from another mother, Havana Steve, not in Cuba, in Northern Ireland. Cool. Totally different on the old nostrils. So I had it in my head. Bundy OP was a lot stronger than that. 57.7. So Steve, Steve O's just basically bottled up for me. Good old boy. I, I thought... Um, I thought Bundy was stronger than that. I've not really. I've not had. I've not had Bundy overproof since I was in Australia. So twenty years now. Do 
you know what? That's not bad. Peppery, spicy tingle to it. A dry, a, a cinnamony tingle. It's not peppery at all. It's a, it's a cinnamony tingle on your, your tongue. You definitely know that it's stronger. It's quite, um, it's quite thick on the first initial taste. So you swill it round. I don't mean, I don't mean like mouthwash, but you kind of that initial sip. It's quite viscous. I like that word. It's quite viscous. But goes from burnt toffee, caramel, molasses into that sort of cinnamony, spicy tingle. Do you know what? I don't find that offensive at all. I find that, oh, vanilla. Vanilla's just come out of me now. It's a decent heat to it. I would say, I would say it's a, quite thin, uh, medium sort of finished. Ray, he's knocking his stuff over. You didn't see that, did you? <laughs> um, it, it hasn't got the body. It hasn't got the body of a pusses of the um, OFTD from Plantation. Um, one of the strong stuff I got. No, or it hasn't got the body of it's the same. I oh know sixty three percent. It hasn't got the body of that, but it, it's it's flipping drinkable. I've got. It's not going to be as cold now. I've got some Stratford soda ginger here. That for me is just a ginger beer rum all day long. Oh my god. That is pretty decent. Do you know what? Slag Bundy off all you like. So we, we know we're chatting Bundy. Slag Bundy off all you like. For me, Bundy is 10 times better than Morgan's. Captain Morgan's. 10 times better than Captain Morgan's. And that's probably not even as much as it should be. It's probably 20 times better than Captain Morgan's. It's, it's not the world's best rum. But it's decent. It's so decent. It's a decent, sippable, session party kind of rum. You know, you're not gonna kick. You're not gonna kick back uh, after a nice night. Oh, I'm gonna pour myself a nice slip of rum, and you're not gonna pick out the Bundy. You're not gonna do that. But if you're thinking, right, I'm going out on Saturday night. I'm going to a party. I know I'm gonna be drinking 10, 12 rum and cokes. Drink responsibly, kids. But I know I'm going to be drinking, you know, a few cans of Coke. That's the sort of rum you want to take with you. That is perfect for that. Because, because you're not going to a party to sort of just, well, unless you're going to sit down and really educate people about rum. If you're going to a party where you're just going to be like catching up with people and having chats and banter and all that sort of stuff, that's perfect rum for that. But the OP with like ginger, the spiced. Spiced. I've got to stop calling it ginger. Sorry, Katie. Spiced. That is decent. It was another 57. What was it? It was this one. No, that's my um that's my pusses. Oh, victory. That was what it was, wasn't it? 57. I've got another 57. This is the uh Isle of Wight, the victory kind of 57. So similar ABVs. Let's just get the difference on these. I'm assuming this was, uh, I forget what this was now. I think this was Guyana. <coughs> okay. So the Bundy OP is decent. There's a golf. <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole golf in taste both 57s well sorry that's that's just hit me so that's the this one look. there we go there we go that's better so that is 
luscious. Um, what am I tasting? Caramel, not burnt toffee, but lovely caramel. Demerara. Cool, it's still on my palate now. Clinging to the side of my uh, thing. And that's just what Steve sent me. Bundy OP, there we go, 57.5. Um, yeah, there's, there's a pretty big difference there, I have to admit. <laughs> but... If I if I was in Australia and that was my thing and that was like twenty dollars or nineteen dollars or whatever the hell it was, you know that's that's pretty decent. That is pretty decent. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Thanks, Steve, for that. Uh, I, 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 that said, flipping love it with ginger, uh, spiced, spiced. Sorry, Katie. Um, right. Where do we go to? There's a few comments here. Right, Equiano, I guess I'm late. I've seen that. I've seen that. Uh, right, here we go. Greg, this is Greg's old fashioned rum fashion. Sorry, the real McCoy 12 with 30 mils of sugar. Wow, okay. And a Dos Medeiros uh, 5 plus 5 with 15. But I like a mixture of Angostura and orange bitters. Okay, interesting. So that's, um, and I don't mean this in a bad way. I'm just Greg, so please don't take offense at this. And I don't mean it like that at all, but um, that is quite sweet uh, for definitely for me and uh, for a lot of people. So Dos Medeiros is another rum. So this is the difference in palettes. Dos Medeiros five plus fun, uh, five plus five is another rum that I really really like. I would not add sugar to that in a rum fashion because the rum is sweet enough for me without the rum fashion. I would stir it down maybe uh, for a slightly bit of dilution and I would add some bitters, but I wouldn't add sugar. So that's just to gauge other people's palates. Everyone's got a completely different palate and that's what this whole thing is about. You know, there's no right or wrong. The real McCoy 12 with up to 30. But I like I like the blend of uh, bitters though because that really does add. So I've got you know for those hang on for those of you that have not seen this that have kind of found me in the last few weeks where I haven't really talked about it. You know because I, I I haven't flexed for for quite a few weeks. This is we can't even see it there really. Can we see that there? This is can you see that? Oh, it's flipping heavy. I'm the wrong way around. There you go. You want to kind of oh there we go. We can do the twisty turny. This is flipping every. There's about 45, 50 bottles of bitters on there. Jesus. That's heavy. <laughs> um, so there's so much you could do with like rum fashions and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Katie Stratford. Who's this Katie Stratford? Who is she? Uh, a weird headache. Have you been necking samples again? No, it's, uh, it's like weirdy, COVID y, long COVID sort of thing going on. Uh, but yeah, probably probably the booze doesn't help. But <laughs> uh, got Bundy OP handy. Thank you for the love. No, Katie, Katie, thank you, and Dan, and Dan, thank you for the love. Hey, we've got big look. We've got big things for planned for Stratford Sodas. We're 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 going to take. You know, you are crucial to us taking rum to the masses in the UK. There's plenty, there's plenty more videos coming up soon. Uh, Saturday. Oh, there might be one dropping on Thursday as well that features you. Um, uh, got married. Top cheese. Right. I got tropical. I got tropical and kind of boiled bananas. I got tropical and a kind of boiled bananas. It tastes nice, even if the description is weird. Uh, very smooth. Have not had time to make a dack with it yet, but that is the plan before I go to bed. Nice. Nice top cheese over in Norway. Finally updated the name. It's been five months. Wendy's getting all excited about five plus five. Uh, there's a hell of a smell on the OP. Oh, black. Oh. That that just reminds me of um, black currant, um, like oh soothers. That's interesting. Or am I just smelling? No, that reminds me of black currant halls or black currant sweets, like um, like oh yeah, the hall soothers or what's it like? What's the other ones? Lockets, lockets. That's what I'm thinking of.
It doesn't taste like that. It it's burnt toffee, caramel. Definitely that cinnamony, that cinnamon spice to it. I don't think that's offensive at all. I, I'm pretty surprisingly little burn for rum at 57.7. Oh, here we go. Look, he's back. He's back. He's, he's been polite to stream a tail. Now he's back. <laughs> uh, had many good... Yeah, see, that's what I mean. This is what people don't appreciate. You know, people will judge a rum on the actual rum. And sometimes you have to judge a rum on where you're drinking it and what you are doing. And for me, Bundy will just hold those fond memories of like Darling Harbour, of the uh, the Sydney Bridge, of the river cruise up, up the estuary or whatever it is, the uh, uh, Sydney Harbour cruise of, you know, just my first ever subway, <laughs> all those, you know, I've got so many memories, like um, Taronga Zoo and all that, like holding koalas and stuff. I've just got so many memories of that trip to Sydney. And Bundy is at the heart of it because every night is Bundy and Coke on draft. It is, you know, it's just this incredible phenomenon. And you can't slate a rum for that because if you slate that, that's slating your whole holiday. Uh, right, surprisingly little burn. Right, bingo, 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 bingo. Well, I have to say, after 30 years since I drink rum in Oz, I definitely have lost the love for Bundy OP. Tastes like old rubber tyres to me now. <laughs> right. Uh, forgiven. Kate, I think Kate is a bit. Uh, must be the booze making you mix up the names. I think Kate is a little bit tipsy now. <laughs> right. Just I love reading these comments. Right, I might have sugar off. But I might. Oh, Greg. Oh, Greg, Greg, Greg. It's my rum fashion, Greg. Right. I might have the sugar off because I use measures, US measures, and mess up the translation and often pack it as blender instead of sugar. Okay. Uh, no, I, to be fair, I work in uh, US, to be fair. I, I think the UK is pointless. 50 mil, 25 mil. I, I work in 60 mil, two ounces. Um, one ounce, 30 mil. So double bubble. If I say double bubble, nine times out of 10, I'm talking 60 mil. Uh, so me for a daiquiri at the moment, and I know it's daiquiri because I don't really do old fashions or rum fashions too often, but me as a daiquiri at this precise moment is roughly 60 mil of um, rum, 22 and a half mil of lime and about 15 mil of sugar. And that's roughly about a five to one at the moment or five. Yeah, give or, give or take. If I, it'd be a lot easier to me to explain in 50 mil. So I do 50 mil of rum, uh, 20 mil of um, lime juice, and then 15-ish mil, 12 and a half, 15 mil-ish of sugar syrup. So it's roughly about five to one and a half-ish daiquiris. Uh, Nick, 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 my wish list for bitters is nearly as long as my rum. I, I tell you what, Nick... Um, these, I'm going to give you some core ones, just to, once I think, so I think you can narrow down your wish list quite easily. We're going to, we're going to keep, as, as Katie is like paying me a thousand pounds per, uh, per live stream to showcase her, her wares, I'm going to keep these on stream. <laughs> There's going to be something that goes, really? <laughs> oh my God, is that how much they pay you? <laughs> there's, there's no money changed hands before anyone kind of believes that. Right, so bitters number one, I think it's a must-have. Uh, pineapple, Miss Betters bitters, pine. I'll give you an even better close-up in a minute. Uh, pineapple and star anise. I do think um, these are kind of a staple as well. As much as I, I like being loyal to Miss Betters, I think these are a staple. Elamakuli tiki bitters, which are... Um, cinnamon, nutmeg, where is it? I forgot what it is now. Cinnamon, nutmeg, and cinnamon allspice and a blend of island spices. I'll give you proper, proper close-ups of these in a second. Um, the, I, I, I've got low. I mean, the orange tree bitters knock spots off um, Angostura orange bitters. The chocolate bitters, 
uh, knock spots off the, if I can find it, off the, where's that gone? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Um, I mean, I've got flipping loads here. Where are my chocolate bitters? So I've got um, Miss Betty's chocolate bitters, which I think knock spots off um, Angostura. Oh, they're flipping here, right in front of me. Muppet. Uh, what's that? Black pepper and cardamom. I think they are fantastic as well. And it's still the stuff like strawberry and marquan. Mount Fuji, I think, is a great one. I'm going to cover these in... I've got plans. I've got big plans for other video styles coming out on this channel. Uh, it's going to be dropping from bank holiday weekend. I've got plans. But like get grapefruit bitters. I mean, there's so much stuff here. But these there is sumac and kiwi, which I think is cool. But uh, I think they are the core cool ones. I've got smoke and oak here. Um, yeah, what's that? Lav no, lavender. So these ones, I'm just going to give you a really quick close up. So the, these are my all star. Daiquiri bitters, pineapple and star anise. You, I think you need those in your life. They're just phenomenal. They're just brilliant. Uh, these are the Elemakuli tiki bitters. Tropical blend of cinnamon, allspice and island spices. Karen, if you're still watching actually, uh, a rum with a couple of dashes of those might sort of create your spiced rum thing. You know, without it being overly sweet. Uh, these are my go-to orange bitters. I mean, they're just phenomenal compared to Angostura. Amazing. Uh, chocolate bitters, the same as better as chocolate. Did you hear that? Oh, look out. My my rings being closed and the black pepper and cardamom. I think they are great in kind of... Uh, sort of subtle twist on a daiquiri, but the whole range. But the one I, I really want, and it hasn't been released yet, is the banana. Miss Betters have got banana and bergamot, I think it is. And they are fantastic. But I mean, I could I could talk for hours and hours about bitters because I've got loads here, like cola, cola bottle, uh, grapefruit, what are they? Uh, cucumber bitters, uh, lime, oh, lime leaf is coming out to play in the daiquiri. Sorry, I keep looking at the screen, not on the camera. Lime leaf is going to come out in the daiquiri very really soon. Uh, grapefruit is coming out. Um, what are these ones? Yeah, the Mount Fuji. Oh, I'll show you these because I think these have got a big role to play with rum as well, but in slightly different kind of serves. So Mount Fuji, White Peach, Chrysanthemum, Burdock, and Yuzu. They are really good in the daiquiri as well. You know, and you only need, hang on, you only, he says, you only need, and let's talk prices. All right, so that bottle, I'm just going to round it up, 25 quid. And you might think, oh, that's expensive. Uh, they're 120 mil, four ounces, 40% ABV. So, you know, they're alcoholic and they will keep. But that roughly there is going to be roughly, oops, sorry, I'm off camera. That much there, which should be roughly about three mil, four mil, is going to cost you about 35p per cocktail. So it's up to you. Like, you could deem them as quite expensive. You could think, actually, do you know what? That's quite cheap. Um, but yeah, the but that's without touching on the uh, the fee brothers and all that, the molasses, the almond bitters, cherry bitters, pastel bitters, plum bitters, rhubarb bitters. I mean, there's tons and tons and tons here. And uh, they're just great, great sort of riffs. Right. Uh, where did I get to? You're forgiven. I've seen uh, might have sugar off. Right, there we go. I saw some... Right, there it is. So cough medicine then... Uh... Uh, for Lost Years, for Island of Grand and Yeho with Coke. Yeah, see, I think they are um, those sort of rums. The Grand and Yeho, again, that's a great column still rum for um, for Coke. I think that's a banging... It's an all-rounder. I've talked about that before. I think that's a banging rum for rum and Cokes. For It works for daiquiris. Not mojito rum for me. But daiquiris is all right because it is light and column still, but it's also got a bit of character for it to make it um, make it rum, uh, make it a Coke. Uh, don't know what that is. Fully agree. If you've ever drunk Ugandan, whoa, well, yeah, bless you. <laughs> you 
by Ben Leonfries. Look at look at G trying to give me bants. <laughs> right. My friends bought Bundy OP uh, back from Oz. Everyone made it. Eight hours gash, but it really wasn't that bad. Look, people will give it shade because because they will. You know, they, they can't always. Oh, it's an easy brand to attack. It takes a real person. I was going to say man then. I knew I might offend some people. It takes a real person to kind of admit, do you know what? That's actually pretty all right. You know, it's not going to win world records. It's not going to be the best run in the world, but it's all right. You know, that's that's fine. That's fine. That's what we like. Uh, Sean. Oh, Sean's talking to Greg. Sorry. Uh, use quarter to a third of ounce of sugar in rum fashion. So, yeah, that goes back to what I was saying. Everyone's got a different palate, which is which is cool. Uh, Nick. See, for me, rum memories are either with my dad, which means pus is gunpowder, or... My paternal grandfather, which means a good anchor cold. But, see, this is the funny thing. I know people that will come at Pusses and go, Pusses is a terrible run. You know, it's just not the quality of uh, Guyana, just not the quality of, like, El Dorado. It's just not the quality of Bristol Spirits doing Guyana rums. But, to you, Pusses is phenomenal because it's the memories. You know, so... Every because pusses is a love or hate it thing as well. I kind of like it, I do really like it, but then again, it's got memories attached to me. So, you know, there's always an argument for and against. Pressed send by mistake. Uh, oh, is he is he cut and paste? Is he spelt it without the typos? <laughs> He's done it without the typos, right, Nick. Uh, I have Star Anise, Ella McCooley, Regan's uh, using Fee Brothers chocolate, thinking of Vitamins Exmol. Vitamins Exmol, quite good. I haven't got the Exmol, but I've tried them. They're, they're all right, actually. Uh, I think you can do better uh, through Miss Bitter's Bitter Soap on that sort of stuff. Definitely. Um, and those that were in at Imbiber with me, and even Charlie from Australia uh, was in Bible with me, I think he'll agree. Um, Claire will back me up here. I don't know whether Kevin and Rachel tried the bitters, but I know Claire definitely tried the bitters. Bitters, bitters. Um, it's just a golf in flavour, golf in taste, huge golf in taste. Uh, right, I isn't pusses. Oh, what's the time? Can I get involved in this argument? Um, Uh, Greg, um, no, <laughs> is the short, sharp answer to that. No, it isn't. Um, because, um, I know, I know I'm not going to get in, I'm not going to get into the audience and outs of this. Uh, Pusses is not even a Navy rum. Uh, and they'll quite openly admit to this because nowhere on that bottle, actually, absolutely nowhere on that bottle gunpowder, and I'll even give you a close-up. Nowhere on that bottle does it claim to be the original rum. Nowhere on the bottle does it claim to be Navy rum. It says British Navy on it. It doesn't claim to be Navy rum. Um, even on the back there. So is it the original recipe? No. Uh, far from it, because we know... Um, there was absolutely no original recipe because what happened was ships went from port to port, island to island, to Caribbean island to Caribbean island, and brought back whatever from where there was no official navy blend of rums. There was a navy strength because it had to be at proof for gunpowder to ignite if the barrels toppled over and got the gunpowder wet. Um, but there's no official. Navy recipe because it changed freaking month on month, year on year. You know, if, so, some blends would have had Guyana, Trinidad, and Jamaica in it. Other blends would have had Guyana, Barbados, and Trinidad in it. You know, it, it's just, it's so, as a rum thing, this is the big common misconception about Navy rum. 
Navy rum purely refers to a blended rum traditionally, traditionally from English colonies at uh, back in the day, 57 percent and over because 57 percent back in the day was 100 proof. These days, because of decimalization and the way it's gone, uh, 50 percent is 100 proof. So anything over 50 percent or 100 proof is over proof. So 54.5%, so 57%. They are all over proof. Um, so that's is, you know, we we could talk about that all flipping day long until the cows come home. There is so many ins and outs in it. Basically, to be a Navy run, it has to qualify for two things. It has to be at Navy strength, which is 54.5% this day and age, but 54, 57% back in the day. And it has to be a blend of English colony rums. However, there is also documented history of Navy blends, like getting some Spanish style of rums in there, some Venezuelan rums, some Nicaraguan rums, uh, kind of being brought back and blended into there, there as well. So as much as we like to think it is a blend of English colonies, there is actually documentation that shows Spanish, at uh, some points, Spanish colony rums in that blend as well. But our two big things to be a navy rum is a blend of rums from English colonies and 54.5% or over, or 57%. They are the two things, essentially. Um, but Pusses does not even claim to be the original recipe. There's, there's the big common misconception about that, but no. Both my bottles, right, I'm assuming because they're, they're the same labels all the way around the world, I'm assuming your bottle says that, right? British Navy, yeah, British Navy, so fine, uh, Pusses Rum, right, Originally, original Admiralty Strength. You've got three, you've got four different statements there, four completely different statements, so Original Admiralty strength refers to that. Basically, gunpowder with still light in at that proof, at that strength. Okay, so gunpowder proof re relates to that. You've got Puss's Rum, which is the brand. Okay, and British Navy basically refers to um, basically Puss's raising money towards the British Navy. Puss's give money, donate money to the British Navy every year through sales, through profits. That's that's what it is. It's not even a blend. You know, it's Guyana. It is product of Guyana. It's a Guyana rum. It is El Dorado or DDL rum in there. Now, that's not doing Pusses a disservice. Pusses is a great tasting rum. Fantastic. I love it. The Pusses Spiced, one of my favorite all-time spiced. Pusses 15 is an absolutely cracking Sipping rum, absolutely. Hang on, let's get rid of that now. Absolutely cracking sipping rum. The pus is 15. The pus is um gunpowder proof, I think for me, is almost a staple in zombies in my ties in those kind of drinks. It adds that depth of character that El Dorado doesn't. I get much more rum, much more flavor off that than I do like the El Dorado eight year old or something like that in my ties. I think that is a belting rum. But is it the original Navy rum? No. <laughs> but that's not putting it down. It's just not the original Navy rum. They don't even claim to be the original Navy rum. They don't even claim to have the original Navy rum recipe because there is no such thing. That's me off to bed. Early rise. Uh, Greg, I'm, as your US, I'm sure you have the same sort of thing. But you know, we've we've got the forty percent thing in the UK, um, which is that. But I think back in the day, the blue label used to be the gunpowder proof as well. They've just had a whole rebrand in the last ten years or so. But yeah, so, but that's forty percent. So that's not a navy rum because it's forty percent. It's under proof. You know, is right. This is the other thing. 
if we're, you know, if we're, it's only fair dues that we attack this, right? Uh, if we've done the whole pluses thing, Woods, old Navy rum. Original Navy recipe. Well, no, because it's distilled at Guyana. It's a blend of that. We know Navy rums were blends of multi, they just threw in whatever rum they had coming back from the Caribbean, whether it was Barbados, Jamaica, Trinidad, you know, Guyana, all St. Lucia, you know, all these other islands. It was a blend. Navy rums were a blend. So for Woods to say old Navy rum, original Navy recipe, it was rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Come at me, Woods. Come at me. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Right. Uh, I think pusses use... I think the Royal Navy use pusses. Yeah. So, basically, when... Um, when there's any kind of event in the UK to do with the Navy, uh, especially the old guard, uh, the old boys, they used to be in the Navy back in the day, uh, Pusses, because they donate to the Navy, um, Pusses is that brand that does all the Navy stuff because they raise money for the Navy. It says so on the Navy website. It says so on Pusses' website, you know. Um, but that, you know, that's where that connection comes from. Pusses are doing so much for the British Navy. You can't take that away from them. But is it the original rum of the Navy? No. It's just that they've... Whereas... Let, let's, let's, let's school you like this, right? Lost Years are saving turtles. Lost Years, whole thing... Lost Years is a brand. The whole thing is about saving baby sea turtles. Yeah? Right? Pusses... Pusser's whole thing as a brand is raising money for the British Navy. It's, it's that simple. That's the comparison. Great, great rum, you know. Just uh, it's not what people think it is. And I, I don't know where those stories have come from because it's never Pusser's that have said that. Pusser's have never said to be the original recipe. Pusser's has never said to be a Navy rum. You know, people just jump to these conclusions. We don't know where the marketing comes from for that because it ain't pusses. It's just people going, oh, yeah, it's Navy rum. <laughs> right. Uh, I think that is me. What are we done? Two hours, 37, half past 10. I think that's me done. Uh, the comments have dried up, which is uh, always a sign that I've uh, I've bored everyone to tears <laughs> so yeah thank you very much i will announce as soon as i know what is happening next week i will announce um the show hopefully i can do that tomorrow it might not be tuesday till tuesday and wednesday um but i will as soon as i know you will know what's happening next sunday uh, but i will be here regardless i just might have a plan i just we might have a brand we might not have a brand but we, I shall know on Monday or Tuesday. But that's been this week. Um, thanks, Nick. You were the only one that said I haven't bored you. <laughs> so I've not bored Nick. I've just bored everyone else. As soon as I said, right, I think that's it. I've lost like 10 people. People have gone, oh, thank God. Yeah, right. He's gone now. Shut up. <laughs> so, so, yes, uh, that's been tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, let me know in the old Discord what you think of um, Streamer Tale. Uh, and I will see you. Uh, through the week. I don't know which way around the videos are, but Tuesday Tuesday and Thursday, one of them is uh, the grand finale of the blind tasting of the white rums, and the other one is uh, a semi, not rant, but a semi-educational piece. And then Sunday, Saturday morning, Saturday morning is a whole new me, and a whole new style of video, Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. So you've got lots of fun this week. Uh, thanks, Katie, uh, Sean, just absorbing. I know. It's weird, isn't it? I, when I'm, whenever I'm chatting and educating, it goes really, really quiet. And I just naturally assume people are bored. And then you kind of think, 
people come back and go, no, no, I'm learning, I'm listening. <laughs> it's just it's just this thing. When I feed back, I can judge a room because I've got an audience. When I'm doing like masterclasses and talks and stuff like that, you can see people's reactions. Here, you can't. The only reactions you've got are the comments. <laughs> so that that's all it is but yes thank you very very much we've got new growth for next week i'll save that for next week and i might have a go steve-o at the ab gold again i know i cracked it but i can't i can't remember it so i might uh i might redo you can't see that can you uh i might redo the ab gold because i generally don't remember doing it and i must have done so that's that for next week so yes uh, hopefully I'll be watching from Zante next week. Ooh. Bunnix, Bunnix, you were here. Hello, Bunnix. I didn't know you were here. Uh, let's give Katie, now officially Mrs. Stratford. Mrs. Stratford Soda. For those of you who don't realise, that's actually her surname and the brand of her drink. So Mrs. Uh, Ms., 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 Mrs. Katie Stratford. Thank you very much, darling. Uh, good show, good show. Bunnix, great show. Now have to yard, what was that? Now have to mow my yard before I loose the light. Right, cool. Was that under the radar? Right, that's it. I'm I'm definitely off. Thank you so much again. I love doing these shows. Um, hide, hide Uh Thank you very much. Love doing these shows. I will see you live and direct for Sunday Rum Day next week. Toodaloo. I have to double click. I need. I need to. Uh, I always forget this every week. I need to click 